mad at himself that he didn't win that race. That's when I realized that second place isn't going to cut it for Ricky. So many different riders could win, possibly win the 125 shootout here tonight. I think it's a, a trend in recent years. In fact, I know it is, the last three years anyway, that a non-champion from his division won the shootout. That could happen well, again. James Stewart's on deck to, uh, to make that tradition continue. And, you know, James is unbelievable. He, he's as fast as the 250s a lot of times, but he crashed a lot. And that allowed Travis Preston right there to scoop up that title from him. And Chad Reed was just about flawless in the East Coast. And, you know, a lot of people are looking at he and, and uh, Stewart as the favorites here with, with Chad being a little bit more steady. But, you know, Preston likes it that way. He doesn't want all that attention. So if those guys blow it, Preston might land in the spot he's been landing in all year. Let's meet the rest of our uh, television crew. Let's start with Terry Boyd. Well, I'll tell you what, Art and David, it's going to be an awesome night down here in Las Vegas. One thing that we haven't had to deal with all season long is a little bit of mud, except for last week in Salt Lake. It's a little bit slick down here tonight, guys, and I think that's going to, well, maybe tell the story. Well, guys, the pit party is done here. Everybody else is in the stadium. But while all the heats and everything else is going on, I'm going to be back here taking you guys into the trailers, all the places that you can't normally go. So we'll see you later. OK, Jeff, let's go to the speed stick track map, David. Well, what always makes this race exciting is that first corner. You can see it's a, a pretty quick race to it, and it's small. That whole next rhythm section has been real interesting, and I can't wait to see what they how they take it off the start. The whoop section here tonight is one and a corner and another one as they head up to the finish. After the finish, they go across the track right there. They go under the bridge to another triple. They, they've done a great job to be able to uh, lay out a different track every year here in Las Vegas. There you see the whoop section going this way and then coming back. And, uh, you know, they've gone around this building. They've gone over it. They've stayed inside the stadium. They've done a, a million different configurations here. And they've done another nice job here this year. The Heat One qualifiers for the 125s will be those from the East Division, the champion, Chad Reed. Michael Brown was second in points. Brandon Jessman got his first Supercross victory this year. Steve Boniface did very well early in the season. Jeff Gibson, Kelly Smith with Joshua Woods, Hatzel, Horton, Summy, Chase Reed, no relation. Michael Byrne is back for the first race since he jumped off a bike about two stories high and uh, broke some bones and uh, well, it's just been a long time coming back, but this is his first race back along with Carson and Mets rounding out the field. There you see number three, Michael Brown. 32nd board is sideways. We're ready to go with our first qualifier from Las Vegas. Jessamine on the Suzuki. He's been known for great starts, David. Well, the way he won the last race and defeated Reed. He got the whole shot, got out front, and Reed had to come through the pack. This time, Reed's right on his tail. Reed is no longer 103, as you see there, because he has taken the championship in his division of the East. Reed is right behind him. Can he take advantage of him on that four stroke out of second place on this very slick Las Vegas track? Well, he made a bad choice right there. I, I know that he's pretty confident. He thinks he's the real Ramsey Rara. A Jessamine back in, but he decided to run in on the inside before that triple. He couldn't do it. It wrecked the whole next straightaway, and now Jessamine's got a pretty comfortable space because here, the way these corners are, that's all wide open right there. And it, if you go wide, you set yourself up for a block pass, providing the guy's close enough. And right now, Jessamine Mike Brown went down. He's just getting started again, David. Check out the start. Jessamine coming in right there. He's got Reed just at the inside of him. He decides to play it smart thinking Jessamine might not be able to hold it, but he did. Jessamine, Chad Reed, Chase Reed, number 255, is in third place. And Buddy Antonez, the former five-time Arena Cross champion, number 100, is in fourth place. The top nine qualify directly to the main event. Okay, now it gets interesting because Reed decided to go wide, jump the triple. He's right on the rear wheel of Jessamine, and they've got the whoop section. The back-to-back -back whoop section is coming up. See Reed already looking at the inside. Jessamine, number 28. Reed, number 1E, e, winning the East. Boy, what a great opportunity for Jessamine to go, look, that beating you in Pontiac was no fluke. I'm holding <laughs> you off again right here, and you got no excuse. But I don't think Reed's finished just yet. What a good showing, though. About the halfway mark now of our qualifiers. 
The West Riders will have their qualifier next, qualification number two, and then four out of the last chance qualifier will make the 22 rider gate. Here comes Reed, look out. Jessamine feels the pressure now, babe. And he had to cover that inside line that time. He knows Reed's right there. He can hear the crowd getting into it. But he's doing a good job so far. What a way to come back after winning that race where people were like, Jessamine, are really? you sure? Jessamine got a slow start of the season at 11th in the opener and 18th at Minneapolis. But did he come on strong to capture third in the 125 East? It worries me that he goes down that left side of the whoops because he opens the door for Reed going into that right hand. He's got the left down that side right there, but really the way Reed can get around is just to get close and throw a block pass on him. So far, though, Jessica's been able to hold just enough of a gap where Reed can't do it. Reed had a lot farther to come back from in Jessamine's victory over him. These guys have just left third place. Jessamine, Reed, Reed, Woods, Evans, Byrne is in sixth. Here comes Jam. That time, Jessen is staying with the inside. Chad decided to go wide to try to get a run out of him. I think he's surprised right now, going, oh, I thought I would have had this kid by now, especially the way he caught him in Pontiac in that final round. But when you get a win, it changes everything for you. And right now, Jessen is a different guy riding with a new level of confidence and expectation. Miracle Michael Byrne came back before the Nationals, the way he went down. Just really a, a dangerous crash. That was, he just collapsed himself. And it's good to see him back. Seems to be pretty much up to speed, but he didn't get a good start. He's running sixth right now. He actually opened the season out west on a 250 before the 125 East opener at Indianapolis. Took a fourth in that opener. In fact, he was ranked ninth in the standings before he uh, decided, you know, hey, I'm going to go to the 125s, get ready for that, and that championship run, and then got injured in the very first race in Indianapolis. Chad Reed has been close, but so far has not been able to pass Brandon Jessamine. They should be coming around to get the white flag. And Jessamine has maintained that gap. I thought Chad was going to close it, but it's just been a different Jessamine that we're seeing. And it could be that Chad's riding a little tense, too. There he goes. Chad Reed to the inside. They rub a little plastic. Chad Reed takes the lead. White flag is up for on the final lap. Reed has shown us so much good strategy this year. His wins in the main event have come from all kinds of circumstance. Now, and it looks like maybe right there he just decided, oh, I'm just going to check this kid out, make sure I don't make any mistakes. The track's been regroomed a little bit. You see the mud on his front number plate. They've watered it in some spots. Yeah, that's what we've talked about so many times on Chad, how he's smart and he takes his time right down here to the inside of Jessamine. Jessamine's thinking, whoa, where did that guy come from? And that's what Chad does to you. He surprises you. Surprised me. I, I had no idea he was going to be able to make that move quite like that. He just snuck in there. Doesn't look like Jessamine's going to be able to get back after him. Now Chad has picked it up a little bit. That last lap of 55.4 and the best lap by Jessamine was a 56. Point four, so Chad stepped it up when he needed to. His dream was to come to America, and right now he takes the checkered flag, the winner of our first qualifier. Jessamine Woods and the last chance qualifier now coming around. Hatzel in eighth, Smith in ninth, and Brown coming back to tenth. Well, that's not Will it be, be Smith, though, number 34? That's going to ruin the start for Brown for the main event. Brown's in front of Smith now. Boniface in fifth came across. This is our battle for the ninth, and a close one. Brown, Hatzel, and Smith in that order. Kelly Smith, number 34. Well, Brown is, you know, unlike the, the normal format of the 125 class where that would just get him into the main event. It Here. was uh, Summy that has to go on to the last chance qualifier. He was the guy on the bubble behind Smith. Number 35 is Byrne, and uh, he will have to go to the last chance qualifier. That just, with the start the way it is here in Vegas, you need to be on the inside. That's a lot like what it was for the U.S. Open, the same configuration here. So Reed is off to a great start, gets to start where he wants. Check out the Honda results page. Chad Reed.
takes another qualifier. He was known for uh, winning qualifiers, though, during the regular season. Jessamine in second, Woods, Antonez, Boniface, Chase Reed, Mike Brown in seventh, Hatzel, and Kelly Smith, the final qualifier out of uh, this first heat. Let's go to Jamie Little now, who's uh, made her way yes. to the victory podium. She's with Chad Reed. Las Vegas, say hello to Chad Reed. Chad, Brandon Jessamine, the guy that stopped you from breaking the record this year, he got out in front and for a while it looked like he was going to upset you again. Yeah, I've seen Brandon and uh, it definitely brought thoughts back to Pontiac and I can't let this guy win again. He stopped my win stop, but you know, he was riding really good. The track's quite tough this tonight, so uh, really wet, so I think the main is going to be a lot of fun. That was a nice pass. You kind of put him up there on the side. Tell us about it. Uh, I was not so fast in the woods. And then, I just got really mad at myself and said, I just got to go for it. And uh, I had a good line there. And, you know, I think tonight you're going to need a really good start. This track's tight and really tough to watch. And I think that you guys are going to see some bar banging. But uh, it's going to be interesting. It's going to be exciting. If it's anything like that race, it's going to be a good main event. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it, Jamie. I just want to thank the crowd for uh, cheering me on. I really can hear that. And uh, have a good night. All right, that's Heat 1. Who's on the line for Heat number 2? 93.5. Let's go to Terry Boyd now, who's with Michael Byrne. I'm interested in hearing what Michael has to say, Terry. Michael, how you feeling coming back after the injury? It's been a little while since you've been on the bike. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely been a little while since I've been on the bike. And uh, I was coming through the pack then, you know, pretty nice. And uh, my throttle actually got stuck open then on a triple over the back. And I landed and went over the bars. And I couldn't, couldn't finish the race because it was stuck on. So, you know, hopefully I can try and get rid of this bad luck here sooner or later. And... Uh, Get back out there for the uh, last chance and stuff. Well, best of luck. Hopefully, we'll see you a little bit later on tonight. Michael Byrne. All right, Davey. Michael Byrne, a great friend of Chad Reed, both from Australia, as you could probably tell from his accent. Let's check out the West 125 qualifying heat number two now. The champion, Travis Preston. Three wins on the year for James Stewart. Third place in points, Ivan Tedesco. Gosler could win this whole bag of goodies here tonight. He had two second place finishes this year, three podiums. Then you got uh, Travis Elliott, David Pinkery with a win this year, Brack Sellers with a win this year. As we had five different winners in eight races in the 125 West. There's Stewart right there in the pink gear, and there's Travis Preston next to his teammate Travis with the number one on his bike. I said, "Hey, did you walk up to the wrong bike after practice today?" Goes, <laughs> I was actually watching it on video. He told me, and it, it looked kind of odd to see that number there. Other riders who could win this thing, Eric Sorby, the young Frenchman who came over and got three podiums in his first American three races. Danny Smith, who had a podium in the last race. Eric Viejo, Casey Lytle's a one-time winner. Justin Buckaloo, Josh Demuth. They're all ready to go as the board is sideways for our second qualifier. Who will make it out of the West to get into the final of these shootouts? The KTM, it looked like Pinkery. There you can see what I was talking about. There's Eric Sorby right there, 917, trying to get going. Looks like uh, one of the Johnsons right there in the blue and orange. Maybe Kevin Johnson, 757. Look at this. How so many of those guys? I can't keep them straight. <laughs> Number 105, Travis Elliott has taken the lead away from Pinkery. You can see Stewart back. Oh, another pile up. That got Preston, it looks like. There he gets going just before they go into the tunnel. A bad break for the champ. He might not like that number one plate after all. <laughs> He's still got a chance to get in the top nine, however, crashing this soon in the qualifying round. Stewart is all over these guys up front. Watch what happens over the triple. These guys decide they're not going to jump it. They're in traffic. And the corner gets a little tight. Tedesco banged into the champion. There was a... Uh, Pretty much everybody got stuck in that one. It's just a dumb. And then Sorby went riding by. While we were looking at that, Stewart just came from fourth to the lead. The crowd went crazy. He's got Pingree and Elliott right behind him. That's what makes uh, the crowd just love this rookie, 16 years old. He became the youngest rider ever to win an American Supercross at 16 years, 15 days. And that win came at San Diego in the second round. He crashed in every race, but the last one 
in Salt Lake City and San Diego. So it was a matter of holding back the mistakes as we take a look at another battle with uh, oh, a champion is out. You see there is handlebars trying to straighten them up. And Stewart tripled that this afternoon in practice. I don't think he needs to now because you can see the lead that he has. Look at this rhythm section. The triple again. Then he triples all the way into the corner. Unbelievable what this kid can do on a 125 because these guys cannot make it over that stuff. Travis Preston went back on the track. I don't know if it's just to get some seat time, some experience, or what. You see here, Buckaloo's in ninth position. Adolph is on that bubble in 10. Cherry Boy, trackside. Well, we're standing by with Travis Preston's mechanic. What's the problem with Travis's bike? Looks like maybe bent handlebars. Uh, no, the front end's just a little twisted. He got tangled up with some guys on the first lap, and uh, I think he just tweaked the front end, so I just told him to go out there and ride some laps and get some lines. I'll tell you what, we talked about it tonight. Thank you very much for the update. The LCQ may be the way for everyone to transfer tonight. Oh, it's going to be a fabulous LCQ. And here on pay-per-view, of course, you see every lap of every race here tonight. Travis Elliott, boy, he, he's done well. He ended the 125 West season in a grand way. It included a career highlight first podium and moving from 10th to the top five in the standings in the last four races. That's number 105 as we're now on Stewart, number 259. This kid does so many little things so much better than everybody else. And, and what I really like about him is He's brave. You know, I watched him try to do a triple today that only the 250s were doing, and he cased it, almost went down, circled right back around, went after it again, and made it perfect. And that's after crashing on Thursday, and all of us really getting on his case, going, this kid crashes too much. He's not afraid to go out and take some big chances. This is the triple that he was trying to make. And Sorby and another rider just went down moments ago. That's Sorby right there. They just went around. So watch this rhythm section right here by Stewart. As well, as well as Sorby. Triples all the way through that section. He's the only guy in a 125 to do it. What I like about what he did there was he waited till the very end of practice to get that figured out. So nobody else could take a look at it and uh, take a stab at it. It's too hard to go after that stuff once the racing has began. There's Elliott second. He's being hounded by Pingree, number 39 on the KTM. Short is in for it. Sellers fifth. Walker in sixth. Walker, first time winner this year. There's Sorby holding his wrist. Looks like he might not be able to make that main event. That's too bad because Sorby really made a big splash coming to America late here in the season. With all those injuries that Mitch Payton had to the Pro Circuit Kawasaki team, Sorby filled a big void for them. His Final lap is underway. Elliott's starting to pull away now from Pangry, but Stewart is just lighting up the crowd. Everything he's done so far has been flawless. A lot like what we saw last weekend in Salt Lake where the lead was, you know, he's got a 15 second lead on the second place <laughs> battle. Saluting the crowd and making it all look easy while he's pulling away. Buckaloo's in ninth, the final transfer spot with Viejo out of Mexico on the bubble in 10. Number 64, Buckaloo. He had a, a good run going last year with all those starts, leading the 125 title. Viejo had trouble. Viejo and Decker now has moved into 10th behind the uh, number nine position. That very important last transfer spot. Here comes the finish line jump. The checkers are out and waving. James Stewart has won the last eight qualifiers on the season. He takes them seriously. And a 54.4. The next fastest guy on the racetrack, the next fastest lap in this heat was Elliott in second at a 57. So when you can put three seconds on your competitors, it's, it's almost like, come on, is this even fair? You know? <laughs> Stewart, Elliott, Pinkery, the top three in the qualifying round with Short moving to fourth. Keith Johnson on the helmet cam. This is the approach to the finish. He decides to go to the left side with the left and jump all the way over that. Hit the speed jump finish. So. He'll have to go to the last chance qualifier. That will be just packed. Terry Boyd with great riders in the LCQ. Who do you have with you, Terry? Well, Art, we're hanging out with Justin Buckaloo right now. You made it just by the skin of your hair, man. The ninth place uh, position, you made it past the bubble spot. You're going into the main. Yeah, I kind of got a bad start, but uh, rode my butt off on my MotorWorldRacing.com Suzuki, and I'm glad to be in the main. That's what it's all about. That's where the big money is. 
Yep, hopefully we'll go get them tonight in the main. I tell you, if you don't make the main, it's, it's all for not the end of your 2002 season right here tonight. Checking out the Suzuki results page, it's Stewart, Elliott, Pingree, Short, Sellers, Smith, Gossler, Buckaloo, and Decker will have to go on to the Els. Let's go to uh, Jamie Little now, who's uh, on the podium. The MGM Grand Friday, May 10th, ZZ Top, May 11th at the Aladdin, and Scorpion's coming in. Let's go right now to the stage with Jamie Little. Las Vegas, you've heard all about him. Say hello to James Bubba Stewart. James, it's your first time in Las Vegas. The crowd is behind you 100%, and I have good news for you. Five seconds faster than heat number one. Yeah, I mean, definitely. Uh, my Kawasaki got me a pretty decent start. I mean, kind of got pinched off out there, but uh, made it through the pack pretty clean, and uh, I'm telling you, I mean, I'm feeling good. Hey, you don't have the number one play tonight, but I know and everybody else knows you are very capable of winning tonight. What would it mean to you to take home the bragging rights? Definitely a lot. I mean, I don't, like you said, I didn't win the 124 <laughs> championship, but uh, it didn't mean a lot to me to take home, and I'm going to try my best, too. All right, we'll see you in the main. Thanks. All right, who's on the line for the 250s? Well, I'll tell you, we're going to double or maybe triple. And joining us here for our tremendous broadcast location at Sam Boyd Stadium here in Las Vegas is the president of American Suzuki, Mel Harris. Mel, welcome. Uh, how do you like our plush digs up here? Huh? Hey, this is pretty nice, right up here on the top, <laughs> rooftop. Bin. Mel, uh, American Suzuki hasn't had the best of times as far as the 250s are concerned. You had two of the, the greatest riders on your team, <laughs> Kevin Windham, and then all of a sudden, uh, Travis uh, Pastrana, and uh, one of the most exciting, that is for sure, to watch on a track, and all of a sudden, they come up injured, and you don't have any riders on the, on the Sobe team. You know, that's really a, you know, a hard thing to, to swallow this year. You went out, we worked very hard, came up with a real big name sponsor in Sobe Beverages, a division of Pepsi-Cola, had two riders that we had all the great hopes for. They went out, as you saw, Art, in a couple races, and they were leading and doing things, and the crowd was gone nuts, and all of a sudden, here we are, six races into the season, we have no one out there on a machine for us. But you know what, what I like about what you guys have over there, even if they're missing sometimes, is, is when they are out there and they are healthy, both of them can win. Travis can win on a 125. He can win outdoors, indoors, in the mud. He can win anywhere. So you got to be excited about having that kind of talent. Yeah, we really are excited about that. In fact, we wanted to change the rules this year and see if we could go to two 10-lap finals. And I think we would have <laughs> won about three or four of the first ones. So anything to help. Mel, thanks for dropping by. We've got to go down to Jeff Emig, trackside. Jeff, or are you back in the pits? Yeah. Yeah, hey, I'm here with uh, Travis Preston. You went down in that heat race. What happened? Uh, I got like a so-so start. It was mid-pack and uh, went over the first triple, came into a right-hander, and uh, these three little jumps, and there was like five guys, and the inside guy hit that guy, and there was just a chain reaction, and they all hit me and went down. Okay. All right, but, well, the best luck in the main. Thanks a lot. So the 250s now out on the track. Let's check out the lineup. David Villeman, who was second in points. Jeremy McGrath, 10 years, has been on the podium in all 10 years of his 250 career. Nathan Ramsey, Ernesto Fonseca, Damon Huffman, Kyle Lewis, Sebastian Waugh, Darcy Lang, Pavoni, Morgan, Isaiah Johnson, Metz, Tyler Evans, Mason, Lindstrom, Blair, Terlecki, Campbell, Israel, and Dudek. All vying here in the opening qualifier of 250 action. You see Villeman right there playing with that clutch. He's the most fidgety guy I've seen on the starting line. Last week in the Salt Lake, he got an incredible hole shot in his heat race, and he was fiddling with that clutch to the very last second. Bud Light Machine, the Yamaha, Jeremy McGrath. Getting ready here at the start line. It's sideways. We're set to go for our first 250 qualifier. Whoa! Great start by the 23, Honda, and Jeremy McGrath is out in front. That's what I was talking about, Matt. Riders getting shoved over the outside of the first corner of the main event. I think that's Scott Metz. Worse. Yeah, Scott Metz, number 150. Whoa. Mm -hmm. Darcy Lang, number 303, back there in the orange, getting all sideways. So the track is starting to get slick. That loose soil on the top seems like it's getting shoved around a little bit, but underneath, it's really hard packed and slippery. Kyle Lewis with a great start. The privateer on the Moto XXX. 
DGY what, Yamaha machine. He got a whole shot in the main event this year worth $1,500. Kyle Lewis right there running the four strokes. Staying pretty close to MC in the opening lap here. Flash bulbs going off everywhere, and Jeremy's got the start he needs to get out front and try to get a rhythm established because in the practice session this afternoon, I was thinking, man, if he rides like that, it's going to be tough to get on the podium or possibly in the top five. But Jeremy understands the race for so long how the track is going to change throughout the night. He's had quite a, a front blow through here, a lot of wind, and that's going to change the conditions somewhat. Joining us here in the first qualifying heat is Chad Reed. Chad is coming off the track after some pretty good strategy himself as he takes a look at Jeremy McGrath. Of course, one of your heroes when you're growing up in Australia, watching tape for this guy. It feels like, uh, you know, all the time, just sitting here watching on television and watching Jeremy. Jeremy looks a lot like you. No, I, I, watch think, I think I look more like him. I, uh, <laughs> I was trying to switch it around for you. Yeah, it's, I'll tell you what, you guys are, if you switch riding gear, you can fool some people, you know? You know, Jeremy rides really good. I've uh, I've watched him for a long time now, and uh, I love watching him still at the Yamaha track, and he's uh, definitely cool to watch. Yeah, he's starting to get that rhythm section figured out. He had a tough time getting through there. There goes Fonseca. Chad, is this track going to change much? I believe it is. It's, um, when I was out there, it was uh, it was hard underneath and kind of, I guess, some mud on top, and it was, uh, I just sat him behind uh, Jesse, and I was getting a lot of dirt. Yeah. You know, you did an excellent job of kind of disguising your intentions there. I thought you were just going to hang back and maybe he wasn't going to see a move. And all of a sudden, bam, through the whoop section, you just snuck up on him, surprised him. It surprised me a little bit. Did you have that planned or did it just work out? No, I just worked out that way. I, um, I was kind of getting frustrated myself. I was, I didn't really have any good lines and I was just trying to find some lines and uh, just went for it in the whoops and it worked. And, and uh, you know, I can't give Jesse any more confidence than he's already got. <laughs> That's true. A good battle going on for second plays Lewis number 23 and it's Fonseca number 24 both on Honda's Fonseca with team Honda however Ramsey has moved up behind Fonseca remember here in the qualifying round the top four only 250s qualifying directly to the main event Fonseca tripled his way all the way through that rhythm section to make the move but then he leaves the door open right there so he gets him back but wasn't the smartest move to go wide I think he thought he had more of a lead on Lewis than he did Villeman is all the way back in sixth. He might have to go to the semifinal round where the top five would graduate to the main event. Well, you know, so much of what happens here in Vegas depends on the start. The first 50 yards of this race can decide the whole thing. It's a little bit tougher to come from behind, I think, on this hard, slick surface where everyone's trying to be a little bit more careful on the throttle than it is some of the East Coast races where you've got a lot of ruts, different lines. Fonseca rides well on the surface. Seems. He's got good throttle control, but he's nowhere near Jeremy. He's worked his way into second, but seven and a half seconds down on McGrath. Let's check out Jeremy as we take a look now at 24 Fonseca. Jeremy has done a great job here in the qualifier. That's the corner a lap ago where he went wide and Lewis got underneath him. And you see the lead he's already got on Kyle now, so Ernesto starting to find his rhythm out there. His best lap of 55.9, but... Ramsey went down near the tunnel. So he's trying to get that four-stroke restarted. Does a good job of it. But, you know, this is kind of normal for Ramsey, isn't it, to have all kinds of problems? Usually around the tunnel, too. <laughs> but he always seems to rebound here in Vegas. McGrath taking it all the way down to a 54 flat while Villeman still in traffic. That, that was a great break for Villeman. He moves into fourth, which means he's in a good qualifying spot. Well, you know, more than even the qualifying here, Art, it's a lot like the U.S. Open with the start. You guys, if they're not on the top, I don't know, six or seven picks to the gate in the main event, you could get shoved wide in that first corner. It doesn't matter how, how fast you go, you're going to be stuck in traffic. Chad, that first corner is something else, isn't it? That's crazy. It's, uh, actually a little silly, but you know, we have to put up with these things. That's why it's called Supercross. <laughs> Villeman, three wins, 12 podiums in 14 races, with fourth places in uh, the other two. Very impressive at times. It was Daytona that did him in. And here's Jeremy McGrath. 
Jerry McGrath out in front has taken control from the very start of this race. This is the rhythm section where he really struggled this afternoon. Carmichael was the one that jumped all that first, tripling all the way through there, and I saw Brooks pull Jeremy over right away. He was like, look, you got to make this. you got to land on the downside of that so you can triple the next two, and Jeremy's looking at him like, you're kidding me. But he's got it figured out now. He's Still his best lap was the 54 flat. We'll take a look at that in the next heat. Let's skip Norfolk. Some They've got a spotter up top. They missed him for the lap time. Skip kind of wanted to know that. But he gets the white flag now as he comes over the finish line jump. Final lap for Jeremy McGrath. And lots of space between Jeremy and Fonseca. Maybe they can patch me into Skip. I'll let him know what's going on. <laughs> Pretty well defined here in the top four, that's for sure. Now Villeman is starting to pull up on number 23, Kyle Lewis. That's for third. Jeremy got things easy. By the looks of the way he was in practice, I didn't think he was going to have things this easy, but like it's been happening in the last few rounds, the crowd just, whether he wins or not, they still love the guy. He's done so much for so long, it's hard to just kind of roll over and go, okay, we're, we're just going to get on the Carmichael bandwagon now. Yeah, on one hand, it's been uh, a most difficult time in Jeremy's 13 years as a pro. On the other, he's successfully filled the role of the veteran champion, taking the checkered flag here on the first qualifier. Fists in the air for Jeremy McGrath. Doesn't look like Villeman's going to pick up that third position. Lewis running a strong race, best heat race of the year, I think. And it came down to the start. That's what enabled him to get up there and run up front with Jeremy for a bit. Let's go to Terry Boyd. Terry. Guys, we're standing by with Skip Norfolk, mechanic for Jeremy McGrath. Boy, you had the white towel out, not because you're throwing the towel in, but you were trying to whip your boy up to go even harder. Yeah, we're racing the, we're racing the clock tonight in the heat races. We want the first pick on the gate. We're racing the clock. Ricky's in the second heat. Hopefully we're a little quicker than Ricky was so we can get the first pick. Skip, tough question for you. That was only eight laps. You got to go more than twice as much for the main event. Does he have it in him tonight? Yeah, he's, he found that about five weeks ago. So that hasn't been an issue. We just got to get out front in the main event early and we end up where we end up. But the, the laps, stamina, none of that's an issue anymore. He, he found the 20 laps about five weeks ago. We just need to get out front early and then uh, he can ride his own race. And then whatever there you happens, go. it's gonna happen. Skip, thank you very much. There's the strategy for Jeremy McGrath tonight when he gets into the 250 main, guys. Checking out now the hotter results page on this uh, qualifying heat. Jeremy McGrath dominating by 13.2 seconds. Fonseca, Lewis, and Villeman qualifying directly to the main event. Huffman, Waugh, and Ramsey, and the others having to go to the semifinal round. Let's go back now to uh, Terry Boyd. I believe he's on the podium. Terry? Showtime, Jeremy McGrath. I'll tell you what, mission tonight. Get your first win for 2002. Yeah, that's for sure. This is the last round, and uh, like I said earlier, you know, I'd love to get one tonight. I can hear you guys out there, and thanks a lot for being uh, patient with me. Well, you're, you had a chance to talk with Skip, your mechanic. He says, absolutely, Jeremy has 20 laps in him. If you got 20 laps as strong as those eight, look out. Yeah, I'm feeling really good. That Bud Light Yamaha is working really well out there, and uh, I nailed the start there, so if I can get another one of those in the final, we'll be looking good. A couple of sections out there that you have to tie together. I know you were looking at them early. David Bailey actually pointed them out. Some of them are a little scary looking. Yeah, this rhythm section over here, if you don't make it right, it's a big penalty. So, uh, you know, we didn't get much practice on it, so it's kind of tricky out there. And uh, if you don't do it right, it could be consequences. Best of luck tonight, Jeremy. He has seven titles. He didn't come easy. That's what it's all about, guys. Art, David. Thank you so much, Terry. As we check out the lineups now for our second qualifier, first of all, the champion, Ricky Carmichael. Then we got the guy in the Kawasaki, Ezra Lusk. Stefan Roncata, he's on the Suzuki Alaska. Roncata's on the Kawasaki. Nick Way, the top privateer. And Sebastian Tortelli, who got on the podium in his last race, has had an injury plague year. Keith and Kevin Johnson, both in this lineup. Riddle, Clark, Frenette, Young, Hodges, Barrett, Rays, Davis. That's Grozer, Butler, Armstrong, Castillo, and Darren. There you see Ricky Carmichael and Chad Watts, his mechanic. 
Ezra Les. There's a blank on the line uh, that we're having a little delay from it. Joining us during our second qualifying for the 250 round is James Stewart, who dominated his qualifier in the 125s. Stefan Roncata with the helmet cam getting ready. They're revving up. The 30-second board is up. Let's check out that helmet cam. That's what Stefan Roncata is seeing as he puts on his goggles, and it looks like he... He he messing, have... He's messing with our camera there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's... He's pretty far to the inside, though, and I'm, I'm curious to see it. Depending on the reaction he gets over the gate, what he's going to do, because he doesn't put up with anything from anybody. And if he's got even a, a shot, he's going to run it in deep, which he's all these guys wide that are doing to his right. We're revving up, ready to go for the second qualifier from Las Vegas. Sebastian Tortelli on the outside, and it was Ricky Carmichael on the inside for Team Yamaha with RC taking the lead. He does it beautiful, too. He triples out of there twice. He's figured out that good lap, the, the good rhythm through there, even coming out of the first corner, which... Tortelli having trouble taking second place for a double cam right now. So uh, the Kawasaki rider breaks up the Honda 2-team. Ricky Carmichael out in front. There he's got Carmichael right in front him off to the left as they go over the jump. That would be cool if our helmet, helmet camera could pass Ricky. Not very many people have been able to do that this year. And Ricky gets a little sideways there. Messes up the whoop section. Those are going to get hard later because they're starting to develop not really the soft ruts, but they are getting rutted out a little bit, hard packed. If you hit one of those, you get going all sideways. Carmichael, Ron Cotton, Tortelli, and Lusk in a tight path right there. James Stewart, good to have you with us. How did that track feel tonight? It's pretty good. I mean, it was a little slick out there, but um, I think as the night goes on, it's going to dry out. That was the rhythm section that... You have dialed in on the 125, and you can see the distance that Ricky was able to pull out by tripling all the way into the corner that time. Yeah, definitely. That rhythm section is way faster. I think as the night's going to go on, it's going to get a little red and it's going to be harder. Did you wait during practice till the end to do that? Or did it take you that long to get up the nerve, or did you do that to mess everybody up? No, I was coming in that section trying to do it, and I kept messing up before, but uh, I got it going, and uh, let's see who does it now. Yeah, that, it's hard to do that stuff. If you got to do it in the race, you know, and that's what you forced all these guys that have to do now to catch him. Look at that battle. Tortelli to the inside. But Roncata retakes second place. Lusk is right on Tortelli's tail. He goes to the inside. Tortelli, the rod jumps in. Boy, what a battle we've got. Roncata and Lusk now moving to second and third. The track's actually kind of tight, but it's actually kind of easy to pass on. I mean, it's two rhythms. We need to go to the outside and the inside and make a pass. So look forward to a lot of passing tonight. Try to make up your mind what you're going to do with who you've got on your tail and leave the door open or not. Yeah, definitely. I don't think the first lap I jumped both of the triples kind of covered the inside. So it's going to be very interesting who gets the whole shot. Lusk looked really good in the practice session to me. You guys, how was his, how was he feeling about that in the truck afterwards? He seems pretty happy coming in the race. I mean, uh, first he has to get around Stefan if he wants to do Ricky, but uh, it's going to be kind of tough. That triple right there, still no one's done it. I couldn't believe you went for it, especially after you cased it right there, but you made it perfect. Yeah, I think the last time I jumped, I made it the best. So hopefully I can get it with 15 laps in the main. So our situation is Carmichael, Roncata, Lusk, and Tortelli is qualifying. You've got Clark on the bubble. Nick Way looks like he's in seventh place. He'll have a hard time getting to the main out of this one. It looks like he's looking toward the semifinal round. You know, after watching the heat race with McGrath, he was a 54 flat. That last lap by Juan Michael, a 54 one, so he's getting close. And kind of gives you an indication that Jeremy may be on his game. Still not over. He came by us in. He might take that down some more. The section coming up, Buzz has a different uh, rhythm group than run, run run. Yeah, I like that. He's quadrupling all, over, all the way over that. Back up front with Ricky Carmichael, number four, in his accustomed spot. 
Oh, and he just, I, it looked like he came by his pin, and he just went a 53 flat. So, McGrath's over there making a face going, oh no, oh, yeah. I thought I was there. But a full second, that's huge. James, while we got you here, how's your feeling now going into the 125s uh, without winning that championship? Is that a little extra kick, a little motivation to say, hey, you guys might have won the championship, but I'm going to show you one on one? Yeah, definitely. I mean, I feel real confidence on the track. I mean, I like the hard pack, the hardest look back. But um, yeah, I mean, it was a big honor to win this thing. I mean, for bragging rights and the championship. So, Ricky just hit this triple right here. It was pretty good. It's the Battle of Kawasaki's for second place. Lust be careful with Nakata. Here comes Lust on the inside, but he had a lapper. He wasn't able to really run it all the way down the inside that time. And he, he, I would imagine with teammates, kind of hard to figure out what to do so they ride together a little bit more often. Yeah, definitely. You don't want to hit the other teammate, but uh, if you have to do it, you got to do it. Because I had the hardest time trying to pass Johnny O'Mara because he knew what I was thinking. You know, he could always cover it. Yeah, these guys do work together a lot. Run, run, it's home again. He's had Lusk just to his left. Now Lusk just to his right. Here's the wheel. Here's for Lusk. Makes the turn. He moves into second place. Boy, Ezra's looking good today. I look like a teammate block pass there. He could have ran it in. This is the triple that Ricky just did. Not that last lap, but the one before. And there's the different thing you were talking about. That looks cool from here. That's pretty big. Clark is a good four seconds behind the uh, final qualifier right now, Tortelli. Well, it's pretty well defined. I tried that same section Lush just did in practice, and I came up way short. <laughs> It's amazing that you even try that stuff though on your 125. I was over talking to Chad Watson working on Ricky's bike and I said, you know, I think Stewart might try that triple triple rhythm set. He's going, he's gotta remember he's on a 125. <laughs> yeah, that sounds like a bit. If you can see a lot of hard slick parts on the track, it's gonna get real slick as the night goes on. It's getting real slick now, so it's gonna, it's gonna change the race tonight. Castillo, a good friend of many of these riders, is now off the track. He'll head directly to the semis on the white flag, final lap. Are you going to change your tire? Hard pack or something you already ran? Uh, I think I'm on the hard pack now. I mean, the track was, the practice, the track was real dry, so it, it worked in practice, so we're going to sit in the main. You notice these fans? They're not standing, they're not sitting down. They're all standing up for the entire race. This is my first time in Vegas, and I like it here. <laughs> Ricky seems to like it too. He's twice at the U.S. Open last year in that great battle with MC, and he's got a heat race maybe coming up here. Definitely, Ricky looks like he's on this game tonight. It took him a while to get that figured out. This will mean his 12th qualifying heat race out of a total of 16 races this year. The checkers for Ricky Carmichael. Run, Pata. Will be coming in on third after Ezra Lusk. He's on. The last transfer spot going to number 13 on the team Honda, Sebastian Tortelli. James, thanks for joining us. It was good to get your insight right off the track. Thank you. Good luck in the main. James Stewart joining us as Ricky Carmichael goes up to the podium to take his helmet off. They want you back on, James. I hope they got filters on those cameras because this gear is pretty bright. <laughs> <laughs> and you, you see right now what we're talking about. Uh, you might explain uh, why did you go to the the bright pink, James? Um, a little shiny. I mean, I want to I want to be known as something different, and uh, I'm happy these chest protectors and my helmet's awesome here. So <laughs> <laughs> you shouldn't have a problem seeing me on the track. No problem at all. He's usually out front anyway. The camera guy has a hard time figuring out where you are because your leads for the past couple of weeks have been just, you've checked out so quick. Yeah, definitely. Those first seven laps, I mean, those are my strongest laps. And uh, tonight, it seems like, tonight it seems like I'm going to have to put the whole race together tonight. So Chad is going to be tough. So we'll see. Okay, James. Let's go to Terry Boyd now as uh, Terry's on the victory podium after that 250 qualifier.
Well, Ricky Carmichael again showing why you're the two-time 250 Supercross champion. I tell you, Terry, thanks a lot. You know, the bike's working awesome. The track is really good tonight. It's technical, and, uh, man, you guys got to be loving it. Uh, it's going to be a good race between me and Jeremy. Let's talk about uh, momentum, because this race, you've already had the championship wrapped up. Racing really relies a lot on momentum, and I know you'd like to leave here with a win going into next week's opening round of the Outdoor Nationals. Yeah, it would be nice to come out of here with a win, but, uh, you know, I want to be healthy for next weekend, too. And uh, it's going to be a good mini minute. The, the air's really dry here, so... Uh, it's going to be tough. It's uh, 20 laps going to be hard. But, uh, you know, I know you guys want to see me and Jeremy race, and I want to see us race too. So uh, I'm looking forward to the main event. I'll tell you, we're all on the edge of our seats. Nobody was sitting, man. You were busting the only guy to do the triple over here right after the finish line jump. Yeah, it was a pretty good jump, and uh, you know, I'm sure now that I did that, everyone's going to do it in the main. But uh, that's racing, and uh, looking forward to putting on a good show for you guys. Best of luck putting that period on a fine 2002 season. Checking out the Suzuki results page of our 250 interview, our 250 heat number two, I should say. Ricky Carmichael, Ezra Lusk, Stefan Roncata, and his teammate will be going to the main event. As we come back to us and joining us on set with David Bailey, myself, Art Ekman, is Mike LaRocco. And Mike, after one of the most consistent starts on the season I think you've ever had, uh, except for a couple of years you won the opener in Orlando uh, tragedy struck and it struck fast and it struck hard and uh, you were second in points with a good with a good challenge on David Villeman who was number one in points at the time it must have been very disheartening yeah definitely I mean it was a, it was a good season for me and things were going well but uh you know, that stuff happens. I was just uh, in the wrong place at the, at the wrong time. Everybody was expecting Ricky Carmichael maybe to be the first Honda winner on the season, but it turns out to be the Amsoil Honda of Mike LaRocco, who got Honda on the top spot first. But it's kind of good to see your team develop. My gosh, the 125 riders you've had have really come through for you. Yeah, how about that, Travis? I uh, did a great job this year. And uh, I mean, we struggled on the East Coast. Michael Byrne got hurt and, you know, myself. And so it was good to have at least some success on the team. You know, uh, there was uh, there was some moments there with Pastrana that you had that were uh, famously uh, visualized all over the world on television. Uh, but uh, we've got some footage here. I'm a little surprised yeah. for you. Look right in that monitor right there. You always weren't an angel. No. Nope. <laughs> Jeff Emig and Mike LaRocco. LaRocco tries to squeeze through, puts an elbow out. Whoa! How does he kick? Like a girl. <laughs> like a girl. That looked like it hurt though. Those boots are stiff. Yeah, yeah, that was uh I mean I was uh, aggressive in back then and I, I know Travis the situation wasn't even that bad. I mean I went for an aggressive pass and I think he just uh just made some poor judgment and I was just uh in the wrong place. Are you gonna be okay for the nationals? I know that was quite a wrist injury. Yeah, I mean I'm I'm getting close. I ho I know that I'll probably ride Sacramento. The uh, Glen Helen is gonna be pretty tough, so uh, I'm gonna try, see what happens. Got to get points. I mean, if you went in there and just finished 10th, at least you'd have a shot at the title. But you're not going to skip it, are you? Uh, I'm, I'm trying to decide. I mean, I could. Uh, right now, I can only ride 10 minutes. And if I if I go out there and ride 10 minutes, it really doesn't give me much points. So, if I can make a big improvement this week, then yeah, I'm going to race. And that's kind of my plan. I would hope to see you out there. That would be. If you had a shot at the Supercross yeah. title, and it'd be a, a shame to have to give up the first round of the outdoor title. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I definitely want to put my Amzo Honda back out there and uh, as soon as I can, and as soon as I feel healthy, I'll do it. Mike, thanks for joining us, and it's good to see you back up and around. And uh, congratulations, though, on a great team effort you've put together. Independent teams uh, seem to be coming on strong, and uh, with a championship now under your belt, you might have to pay them more money next year, but congratulations. Thanks a lot. Mike LaRocco joining us here on our set in Las Vegas. Let's join Terry Boyd. Five shootout LCQ. Only four riders will advance, rounding out the 22 rider gate. And we've got some great riders here, David Bailey. Well, there's Michael Byrne right there. Number 45 is Tedesco. And all the way on the left, as we joined that shot right there, was 917 Eric Sorby. So he's, I'm glad to see he's OK, but he's got a horrible starting position. And number one right there, Travis Preston, who just wrapped up the championship last weekend in the last chance qualifier. But he's glad the title's over with now. There's Preston shaking his head, getting ready, going through the nervous gyrations. Ivan Tedesco. Boy, you're not used to seeing these guys in the LCQ. They're probably like, what the heck? 
glad this isn't for points. And Tedesco having problems all season long with first corner crashes. I'm sure is not looking forward to the first corner here at Las Vegas. I know. Well, once you have that, there's Sorby on the outside. Once you have that fear of something happening to you in the first corner, it almost seems like you attract more of it. My dad, back when I used to get in all those pileups, was like, what do you have, radar for those things? It <laughs> seems like anywhere there's a pileup, I know where to find you, but sign is sideways for the Let's LC2. see what Sorby can do on the start now. Number 917, he's done so well. Cutting over to American Lane, we're off and running. Only four spots remain for the 125 shootout. Looks like Preston had it. He gave it up. There he's even a left. And our helmet cam on Kevin Johnson. I mean, Burn rather than Preston. Burn number 35 was up there in third place on the right side. Yeah, I guess this guy's mixed up. Sorry about that, but it was a. Uh, it's Preston in the lead. Preston came out of that inside. He had to let off a little bit early, but he tucked it around and came out in pretty good shape. That's what I would do. I'd line up as far to the inside as I could. Try to play that first corner safe, so I have an opportunity to battle for the lead. There you see Preston, number one, W. Tedesco in third. Sorby coming through, 917. Capable of running with the leader. There's Josh Summit bringing up the tail end. And the first lap will be complete. Looks like the track is breaking down a little bit of the whoops. There's some rugged whoops now. Well, you know, it's good in one sense, and bad in another. You've got. They're wearing down slightly, so they're not as big as they were this afternoon, but they've got a lot of rust developing, so it's hard to keep a straight line going. The battle is on for first. Byrne wanting to get into that main event after coming back from injury, putting the pressure on Preston, number one. I was thinking that Byrne really needed to fix the start. Looks like Tedesco. Yep. They're part of bar right there now, battling for second place. Tedesco is going to block past that. So that would have set that up. Was Byrne was trying to go wide and jump the triple, and Tedesco wanted second place. So. Right now, Casey Lytle is in the fourth spot, the final transfer. These guys battling back and forth. Really let Travis Preston start to pull away from this now, so he can go out there and try to get a little rhythm going. And the thing about Preston out front is that it, it takes him a little bit longer to get kind of warmed up and get a good flow going. And there was no Friday practice like normal where they can get things kind of figured out. So this is not such a bad deal for these guys running up front anyway to be able to check the track out a little bit more and figure out what the best setting is going to be for the main event. Tedesco still in third on the Yamaha Troy. Team of Mike Larocco. He's got to feel good a bit, even though he's in the last chance qualifier. He got the whole shot, so he's got the start figured out. He might not have be able to start from where he wants to because of coming out of this LCQ, last chance into the main event. But you know, anytime you can get the whole shot, you can sit on the starting line. Oh, Tedesco, failing a little bit. You can sit there with a little bit more confidence. Well, okay, I can do that again. Last chance qualifier and last lap on the last chance qualifier. So it's all out to finish off the main. 355, Horton has moved into fourth in front of Lytle. Lytle, number 59 on the bubble. He's got a line up with those Yamaha four strokes on his tail. And here comes Sorby. Does a nice square off, picks up a guy. You might be able to get both these guys before it's over. They're trying so hard to get around Horton. He got squeezed off there a little bit as we go out in front once again with Preston. Wouldn't that have been something if the champion had won the region? didn't make the final event in the 125 shootout. Almost happened to Ramsey once, but he came through. Oh, Ramsey was in the last chance qualifiers. The checkers fly for Preston, and two riders fell down in front of him, and he made the main and then won the race. <laughs> final transfer, look at that move by Lytle. Number 59 on Horton. Oh, Casey yeah. Lytle, a one-time winner in his career in 125s, just barely gets into the main event with a great move. Cracks. There goes Sorby on the left. He's not happy with the way things just turned out. And you saw Terry Boyd running up to number 59, Casey Lytle there, and there's Preston going toward the uh, podium. Oh, I bet he's relieved. You know, he, every time he crosses the finish line when he wins the race, he's looking around like, is that it? Is that the checker? Did I win? <laughs> he Did only I really had win? one win of the two that he 
three uh, of the three career wins that he actually knew that he was in the lead, and that was his last one, of course. He doesn't get too concerned about things. He just takes it a race at a time and wanders through everything without getting too nervous. And, you know, it really showed that way last week where the pressure was on him. He had to have a good performance, especially with Stewart on his game winning the race, putting the pressure even more on his shoulders and didn't seem to affect him much. Check out the uh, new Nissan LCQ results. The last chance qualifier with Preston Byrne, Tedesco, and Lytle making the main event. Horton and the rest of the crew, well, they have to go home now. Go out there, go up in the stands and watch the main. Terrific crowd. Always a sellout here in Las Vegas for the final round. And the 125 shootout this year. Boy, if, if qualifying is any indication, then David, we're going to have one heck of a main event. It's going to be wild. And, you know, you can see the confidence on the faces of Reed and Stewart when they were here. I was looking at them and watching yeah. how they were acting and what they were looking at, watching those 250 heats. And those guys are very focused. Ramsey's the only two time winner of the 125 shootout. Let's go to Jamie. Jamie Little at the podium. Jamie. That's right, Robbie Horton taking home the medic card. Bad news for him, he doesn't make it to the main event, but he gets an extra $125 from Asterix. Want to thank those guys, but right Say hello to your 125 West Coast champ, Travis Preston. <laughs> Travis, you know, I'm sure this isn't the way you wanted to start, it, start out the night. You had to earn your way into the 125 main. It's chaos out there. Yeah, I know. Well, actually, I planned this. I went down on purpose, and I wanted to get some more track time, and it worked out good. Why? Have you been talking to Nathan Ramsey? Uh, no, I haven't. Why? Because he uh, went from the LCQ, and he ended up winning. See, exactly. He knows what's going on. That's right. So there's a big party tonight. Everybody's celebrating. They're ready to go to the joint tonight, so I think you got the pressure on your shoulders. You better take it home tonight. All right, I will. All right, let's hear it one more time. Travis Preston, we'll see him in the main event. <laughs> well, it a little tongue-in-cheek there, David. That's what I was talking about. You, you just never know what's going to come out of his mouth. Let's take a look now at the rundown for the first semifinal round. Damon Huffman, a one-time winner. He won in uh, Atlanta in the 250s. Sebastian Waugh. He's been a top privateer all year long. Isaiah Johnson, Nathan Ramsey, the one-time winner. Ramsey pulling up to the gate, and as we just heard, Ramsey came out of the last chance qualifier to win that 125 shootout. And he uh, he won last year and really kind of upset the whole deal because Fonseca had been you know, the first rider to win on that new 250F in the West. And Travis won in the East. All the hype was on them like it is this year with Reed and, and Stewart. And Ramsey smoked them both. And he got a win this year in the 250. So first guy to do it on that new 450. Honda four stroke, right. So the, the and the first four stroke to win since right here in Las Vegas when you had Tim Ferry on the Yamaha. Doug that Henry. Was, that was, yeah. Doug Henry, I mean. That was some time ago. Yeah, you see the 30 second board out there. Ramsey. Sideways. And now they're revving up for the semifinal round where the top five will graduate to the main event. We're open running. like Huffman. It did, number 20 on the Suzuki. But now, now Ramsey pops into the lead, number 25. That's been happening all night. And usually what happens is everyone starts to notice, okay, if you go to the inside, tuck it around, you seem to come out in good shape. And then everyone just slams on the brakes for the main event, and the guys that go a little wider seem to come out better. You see Ramsey right here. Huffman in the, the yellow finner there, definitely with the whole shot, but Ramsey tucks it to the inside of Darcy Lang there in orange on the Kawasaki. He was able to get through the end of that rhythm section a little bit better into the corner, pick up the lead, and definitely belongs in the lead here in this semifinal round. And like Preston said, he's going to get some more track time. Here, look at this. David Huffman has reestablished the lead on Ramsey number 25. Waugh has moved into third. Lang is fourth. Evans fifth. Campbell sixth. Morgan, Terlicki, Mason, Metz, Pavoni, Johnson, and Blair. Watch this rhythm by Ramsey. Jumps his way into the lead again. Nathan Ramsey, you know, if it hadn't been for a couple of 17 place finishes and having to sit out one race with an injury, Nathan would be having a great rookie season on the 250s. 
may be in that battle for third. Check, Check it out again. This was Nathan getting blocked past at the end of the whoop section in that opening lap. Kind of getting caught by surprise a little bit there by Huffman, who's been around for, seems like, so long with enough skill to get up and lead these races. And A great right. 125 champion, David. How about the time he came over this building? You saw that. <laughs> I missed it. Yeah, he came off the building. At that time, they were racing up over the building that we're sitting on and uh, would jump off of it. And I think it was Trittler, a, a three, right. three digit, digit uh, rider named Trittler was right behind him. Huffman had leaped off the building. Trittler did a somersault in midair, came down and straddled the back fender of Huffman with his arms around him like, uh, like he was hitching a ride. He had to actually tap Huffman on the shoulder to let him off. That's it was rather bizarre. Somebody got that on video. To, video to, that's a that's gold. I don't think I, they haven't found it. That was several years ago. Huffman one win in Atlanta, and wouldn't it be his luck? Number 20, the Suzuki we're talking about. He breaks his leg in Atlanta the next week after Atlanta. That really threw a wrench in his whole deal because he had a good head of steam going. And remember the battle he had with Jeremy McGrath. The year Jeremy was just about ran the table at 96 up in Seattle. Took it to Jeremy all the way up to the very end and finally made a little mistake and Jeremy hung on, kept his streak alive. But Huffman's experience in Supercross and his smoothness has been so consistent. Oh, that was an exciting race in Seattle. Because Jeremy McGrath was putting that string of things together and, and Huffman all of a sudden uh, was really challenging big time. Huffman has won here before. He's won one 125 race. Ramsey has won two 125 races here. So the two guys out in front are rather experienced on this soil, this hard pack. I don't know if we'll be able to see it in any of these shots, but Ramsey's seat actually is like two levels, right behind where he sits when he sits forward for a corner. It goes up a little ways. He was talking to Honda guys going, man, I can't hang on to this. I can't stay forward on it. So that's a joke. They made the seat. It actually raises up about an inch right behind the sweet spot, right there in the pocket where you want to sit in corners. And he liked it. That was the week of Pontiac, and he won that race. He's been using it ever since. Ramsey coming across a lapper right now in the last transfer spot, as you see right there, is Evans. You know, I'm impressed with Evans, Art, because you know, he searched for an identity. He was here, but I really began noticing him on 125. It was a few years back, he put in a strong ride, and then kind of went off with a freestyle thing. And, Changed his look a little bit, got a little bit of ink, crazy hairdo, and, and uh, became kind of a bad boy in the, in the freestyle deal. But he's come back. He's very professional. And Started out with a Suzuki, and then when Steve Lampson went down with injury, the Husqvarna gave him a factory ride, but he's had a really difficult time with injuries and changing bikes, uh, qualifying for eight main events this year. His yeah. best finish the 14th in Minneapolis. He's had a, a tough time with a low back deal. I, I was watching him get dressed put his jersey on at New Orleans. Like, what the heck is going on with his back? He wrote Minneapolis where he got 14th his best of the year with a broken collarbone. Yeah, he's tough. And he's, he's putting up with, you know, some of the growing pains of Husqvarna trying to get back into the mix of having a competitive motorcycle out there. Of course, Lampson doing a lot of the legwork on that, but he doesn't complain. He doesn't complain about his injury. He hasn't complained about some of the problems they've had this season with the bike. It's crazy stuff. And, uh, you know, you expect a guy like that that came from the freestyle thing where he wasn't afraid to say anything to really <laughs> kind of bitch about it, but he has Ramsey with a 3.7 second lead on Huffman now is pulling away, and two seconds behind him is Jean Sebastian Waugh. We're looking at number 25, Nathan Ramsey, on that four stroke. Final lap, the checkers are waving for Ramsey, who takes the semifinal win. Puts him in the main event, not with the best start, but he's got some power there that he can make up for that. He's been smart, though, coming from behind, from fifth and sixth place, if he can get a decent start. I like his resolve. You know, you get into a race, and you, we're looking at the battle up front, and there goes there's, uh, Tyler Evans off the track. He's made it into the main event. In fifth place, he only takes five out of the semifinal, so he just squeaked by. Nathan Ramsey's right there. Let's go to Terry Boyd. Well, guys, I'll tell you, we're looking at Tyler Evans, kind of the freestyle motocross guy at the beginning of the year. Everybody said, how serious is this guy? Well, you tell us. I'm very serious, you know. 
Every week, I mean, I've been giving 110 percent. Every week, it's been getting better. So it sucks. It's the last race, but oh well. There's next year too. So. I'll tell you what, a family guy riding the factory Husqvarna, and he's in the main event of the final round here in Las Vegas. Let's join another uh, t mate of our telecast, Robbie Floyd. We caught up with him earlier. To graduate out of this second qualifying heat, let's check out the order of things. Ryan Clark, the top privateer, Nicholas Way, he stands to make $25,000 for being the top privateer this year. The board is sideways. We're off and running. Way on the inside. But it's a Honda that breaks out in front as a Jason Fernet. Going to pile up in the back. I keep saying how that coming out of that first corner is going to be a problem, and it's going to get a lot more crowded in the main event. That's the rider right there, I believe, Art, that helped Tim Ferry last weekend in Scott Lake. Davis, yes. A tremendous sportsmanlike move. They were trying to qualify. Ferry was pinned under his bike, David. It didn't look good at all. No, he was able to, Scott was able to get down. He just talked, chucked the bike and gave up his qualifying position. You think he deserves a little bit better than going down to the first one right here? <laughs> Absolutely. Well, I had a thing. I think he had a feeling he wasn't in a position to qualify, but to, to stop and drag the bike off of Tim Ferry was a great move. Hodges number 501, Frenette number 441, Rays is 601. Zeb Armstrong is 310. It's Wade as we check out the start once again. Oh, look at Wade all the way on the right. He's all the way down the inside. He doesn't have that hole shot. Zeb Armstrong on that 450F. He's got a little bit extra power. The same bike, basically, that Ramsey just won on. And Ramsey talked about that bike being able to put down a lot of traction. And, you know, another place where it's very strong is getting out to a good start. So he stayed on all that mess and saw behind him. Way, Armstrong, Clark, and Frenette. Frenette in fourth is in position to qualify for his first main event of the year. Excellent young rider out of Canada. Way, number 26, showing his superiority. Ryan Clark coming through. He's been running our helmet camera quite a bit this year. He's riding both classes, getting plenty of time on the track. He's coming along. I, I know I didn't notice him that much. Until he started running our helmet camera, and then yeah. started talking to him a little bit, noticing, you know, he's well, he's you know, he, he took that as a as a learning lesson as well, looking at some of the helmet cam shots and said, oh, I should have done this, and I, you know, I'd rather do it this way the next time. He used it as an uh, instructional tool. Uh, and the other thing too is, you know, when you're going to get a little bit more attention, you don't want to look bad, you know, so he put a little bit more pressure on himself and. I remember that's how it was for me. If you get some riders coming up to you or different people in the industry you're saying, hey, you look really good out there, and you know, if you keep an eye on you, it gives you just a little bit of a boost going into the race. How about that Zeb Armstrong in third place, number 310 on the Honda? This would be his first main event of the year. He's been riding a Yamaha, I think. I think what he's doing here is Hard, it's hard to say what happened with the sponsorship or whatever he decided to do, but I would imagine this is what he's going to do for the outdoors. He's just getting accustomed to the bike now. Battle is on right now with number 49, Johnson and Armstrong. And Johnson makes the move around him into third place. Right now, these guys are just get through these laps, figure out the track a little bit. Not making any mistakes out there. I'd like to send our best along to Heath Voss, number 41, who was injured in the last race in Salt Lake City. And Heath unable to participate in tonight's action. He was right in the thick of things for Privateer of the Year all the way. If he finishes second, by the way, that's worth 15 grand to him. But uh, we hope he's uh, getting along well from that injury. I know Nick Way would rather have him here com competing all the way down to the end for that uh, particular trophy. As we take a look at Keith Johnson, number 49. Nick Way's pretty much got that sewn up now, doesn't he? Yeah, he's made over $12,000 in Clear Channel privateer bonus money just making every main event. In fact, Nick Way is the only privateer this year to make every main event. We've had only four factory riders make every main event. Nick. A lot of injuries this year. There's he looks Nick Wade. good on the bike. You know, some guys kind of fast and all, but not really a style that you'd want to emulate. But with Nick, he looks good. He's got a great style. He does things really smooth. He looks like a rider that 
should be on a factory team. He signed pretty late in the offseason as well. He didn't really have a ride until, you know, the Moto Triple X DGY group came by and said, hey, we'd love to have you ride for us on that Yamaha. Some rumors floating around that he may be drafted onto a different team to uh, sort of round out the, the dream team for privateers. If he doesn't get a factory ride, it's just coming up to that time of year where you talking about blackfoot honda's uh, effort to try to well, i wasn't going to say all the top privateers together there well they already got sebastian wa uh -huh. sean sebastian wa yeah he's so lost they've already got he'd be a nice addition to that team they would own the, the privateer deal seems like especially with the way things went this year but the strength of the privateer and the independent team effort has, has really helped supercross especially in a year like this year when we've had so many injuries. Well, they're just right there knocking on the door. You know, and it is harder. I, I race the privateer, I race at every level. And it gets to the point where you're so close, and then it's those little things that the factory guys, the, the bonuses they have, the, the kind of places they can practice, and, and uh, so many different changes they can make to the bike all the time. Plus, just a little bit more power and better suspension. It makes a big difference to those loops. It's the checkered flag for Nick Way, number 26. He got the whole shot in the 125 shootout here last year and took third in 1999 here in Las Vegas. The last transfer spot. Zeb Armstrong was in fourth with Young in fifth on the bubble. There's Armstrong, number 310. And if he holds on to it against 782 Young. I think those guys are just pacing themselves a little bit, Art. They know he's pretty stoked right there, but they don't want to use too much energy. They've already had a heat race under their belt, and they still got the main. Back to the pits, and Jeff Emig's back there. Jeff. All right, you guys. I'm with Ricky Carmichael, Ernesto Fonseca, Nathan Ramsey here in the factory Honda truck. What do you guys do? After the heat races, you watch yourself win the heat. What do you do then? Uh, we our videos. You know, our, our truck drivers uh, <clears throat> video our heat race and, and other racers and uh, check out where, you know, what we're doing wrong and what we're doing right and uh, try to find out if there's anything better. Now, what's the real story? What do you got in your back here? Are you eating cookies, uh, checking out each other's uh, custom well, paint jobs on the helmets? No, nah, we, we, we're not eating cookies. That's after the race if we do good, but uh, we're nibbling on some uh, paper towels and stuff you know we can't eat that bad stuff <laughs> but uh, i tell you it uh you know we come back and just try to prepare for the main that's that's the main goal it's the main event you look great tonight is tonight you're gonna you're gonna keep that streak going well i hope jeff you know that's the main goal for myself and, and uh to put honda up front so i'm gonna give it 100 percent. i feel really really good tonight i feel like it's no effort Nick Way standing by with us in the Moto Triple X team. I, I want to call you kind of a satellite team, but really you're a privateer team. You're out here shooting and banging bars with the top guys out here on the Supercross circuit. Yeah, for sure. My Moto Triple X, Steve Mathis tuned, pro circuit backed. You know, my, my bike was working excellent out there. I'm really pumped about the start and everything. I want to go out there and mix it up with the factory guys in the main. I couldn't do it without Tag, Smith, HJC, Maxima, CD. WBR and DGY, you know, we couldn't do it without those guys, but I'm coming out here against the big boys, and uh, I'm going to mix it up with them in the main for sure. Say one thing about you, you have a lot of integrity. There was a lot of rumors floating around that you had an opportunity to jump ship and go to a full factory ride. You said, listen, these guys are treating me well. I'm going to stick it out for the season. Yeah, Moto Triple X and my mechanic, Steve Mathis, have, you know, been behind me 100% the whole season, and that means a lot to me. Um, I'm coming out here trying to do the best I can, and you know, so is the team. And Kyle did well in the heat race, and uh, hopefully we can make our presence made in the in the main there, Moto Triple X. One last quick question: It was a little bit slimy, a little bit muddy early on. It's getting dusty down there. Yeah, it's getting a little bit slick here in the in the semi compared to the heat race. But you know, I had fun out there getting this rhythm section down here. Kind of didn't get so much practice, you know, no, no practice yesterday, but I'm getting it down a little bit that time, and, you know, I'm excited for the main. Well, best of luck. Look forward to seeing you in the main. Nick Way. Checking out the results now as Nicholas Way comes from the second semifinal round to qualify, along with Ryan Clark, Keith Johnson, Zeb Armstrong, and Michael Young in the fifth position also qualifies as the top five. Back to Jeff, who's in the pit. I think he's with Nathan Ramsey. Yes, I am, you guys. I'm still in the Honda truck. These guys are watching the video here. Is it true, Nathan, that when you, you always ride the semi or the last chance so that you get more TV time, you can watch yourself? Yeah, you know, I, I mean, if I don't win the heat, if I don't have a good start and I'm up there to win, then I'm just going to throw it down and, and try to make it back to the semi. And, so I can get up there and talk to everybody at least and, you know, maybe check out some other or something. But 
you know, I, I've made some pretty bonehead mistakes, and, and it's pretty frustrating sometimes, but it seems to work out all right in the end. Hey, we were talking earlier about that win in Pontiac. You were like, I didn't think I'd be that excited. I know. I, I mean, you always dream about it, and you always think about it, but, I mean, when it comes down to it, I mean, I was probably like, more excited than, than any race I've ever won, and, and I, was, I was real surprised, you know, compared to the 125 championship and everything. It just felt, I mean, unbelievable, and, and I, I want to do it again. I want to feel that way again. Well you, well, you got one chance here tonight in Las Vegas. I was talking with Jeremy McGrath earlier. He says, in Vegas, you know, when, you, when it's the end and you're ready to be done gambling, you push all the chips out, throw it all in. Is that what Nate Dogg's going to do tonight? Yeah, you know, um, I'm definitely going to put it all out there, you know, and just, you know, let it ride and, and just put down 20 smooth, hard laps. I mean, that's what I did in Pontiac, and uh, it seemed to work out. And, and it's going to be a lot of people messing up here because it's slick, and the whoops are getting even more and more uh, treacherous, you know, as the night goes. So it's going to be the smartest guy to win, so I'm going to try to uh, put my head down and uh, think smart. Uh, what are you guys doing back here in the truck after the heat races and everything? Obviously, you're watching the video. You got any little tricks you like to lay down? You, like, you know, like I was saying, like Ricky, he likes to eat cookies. What do you like yeah. to do? Yeah, well, you know, I'll catch those guys in here eating some Big Macs or something, you know, but, I, you know, I'm too serious for all that stuff. Uh, you know, I come back, maybe if, if I can ever make it out of the heat race, then I come back and lay down and have a little rest before time. But, you know, come back, get something to eat, and, and just uh, watch the video and think, kind of go through the whole track in your, in your head. And, and, and then just uh, try to get a good start when I get out there. All right, Nate Dog, give me one of them good Nate Dog bars. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you guys. It doesn't sound like he's right ready without a bark. You know, the only ones getting into that main event, and you've seen so many times the guys that are getting the better starts are coming from the inside. Campbell and Frenette getting the best choice of gates. And look where they lined up. Way over to the inside. You also got McCormick in there. Pavolny, number 48. 30-second board is still up when it goes sideways. They have 5 to 10 seconds, and the gate will drop. And this last-chance qualifier to get into the 250 main event here in Las Vegas, Nevada. Final round of the Supercross season will be underway. Oh, 97 got boxed out of there. Pavoni made a nice run. Squirted through traffic right there. Came out in good shape. Got around all of this. These guys can forget the main event. See, one of the riders right there, a little fist pump, not because he's happy. They'll be watching the main. 97, Ryan Talicki just getting up and, and going again. It's the bright orange back there in fourth. Pavoni. I'm kind of surprised to see him in this last chance qualifier. He usually makes it out of the semi. Isaiah Johnson, number 58, in the battle with number 75, and that's Ted Campbell, both on Suzuki's. I keep thinking he's McCormick. McCormick had that number. That he did. Year. He sure did. Done that before. Boy, was he a warrior. He's Sorry from about the, that. the northwest part of the country as well, having knee surgery throughout this season. Ted Campbell right there in second place. These guys got a pretty good gap back to Pavoni, but Pavoni in third. He has what it takes to catch these guys. Are you seeing the orange? Pavoni coming off a 15th at Salt Lake City. He's uh, qualified for nine main events, hoping to move up another notch. That's probably the 13th in New Orleans, but right now it's Johnson and Campbell who look like uh, they're very determined to take this thing to another level. Campbell hasn't qualified for the last four weeks. Well, if he can hold Pavoni off, he's starting to inch up a little bit. In fact, both those riders, as I uh, check uh, my sheet, Isaiah Johnson failed to qualify in the last four. So there are two hungry Suzuki riders trying to get in this main event here at Las Vegas. It's great to have that Racer X gas card, a little bit extra money for the guy that is just the, the guy that misses it by one, but they don't want it, you know? They, for Campbell right now, he's going off. Why does Pavoni have to be catching me? And the best thing he can do is try to get out there and challenge the leader, but he's got to be nervous with all the pressure from behind. They would bump him out of the main. Racer X gas card reminds me David Coombs and his wife Shannon expecting their first. And that's why uh, he's not on the field, track side, with us here today. But we wish our very best to them. 
They've been waiting and waiting and waiting. Yeah. I've been calling Davy. Any word yet? No. We've been driving on bumpy roads. We've been eating spicy food. And uh, still nothing really seemed to be working. Actually, our first child, my wife, went a little bit overdue. We didn't want to come out of there. 48's Pavoli. He's trying to pick up the action on number 58, Johnson. And Campbell. Look at that. I he got like, in front of Campbell. Yeah, I felt like Pavoni would have, I think he could still get up and challenge Johnson for the lead. Campbell's just got to do everything he can to keep the pressure on. The last super of the year, just let it hang out a little bit. Pavoni, number 48 from Team Nielsen. He had a 13th in New Orleans, a 14th in Atlanta, and a 15th in Daytona. Oh, it's such a bummer to be in Campbell's position where he, he had it. And he's probably trying as hard as he can right now, and he just doesn't have quite enough. But still, keep the pressure on. Go as fast as you can. No, at least you gave it everything you had. And maybe that little extra pressure back there for Pavoni, he'll know that he can't blow it. it might make him a little nervous and make... And who knows? These guys can get together first and second. Oh, Pavoni fishtail it big time. And here comes Johnson back again, or Campbell. Campbell number 75, Johnson out in front. Pavoni in second place. A good battle for his last chance qualifier. I missed main events by one. It is just Look a lousy that. feeling. That, On the that's replay. What, actually, what set up Campbell's Almost getting him back. Pavoni having to cut that corner pretty tight. Lost his rhythm. Didn't get into that roof section with enough speed to stay on the tops of those things. And he almost lost second. Johnson getting a little squirrely right there. Starting to feel the heat. You know, it's getting quite windy out here, David. Does that affect these guys down to the bowl of the stadium? Yes. Yeah, it depends on how it's more up. You know, if it's anything like it is up here, Art, it, it does affect you when they go up in the air. You just have to sort of make a mental note where that wind's coming from. There's flags all around the top. So the guys on the starting line, they kind of look and go, okay, that jump might be a problem. And if it's coming from your left, you want to aim a little left and jump into the wind. It always seems to blow your front end out from underneath you. It doesn't blow the whole bike the same. White flag is out for Johnson and Pavoni. Still lurking is Campbell. Johnson doing a good job holding his own out front. Pavoni is trying to stay in second place, so he's creeping up on him. He's putting a little pressure on him right now. Well, this is where you know, it would be nice to win the race, but if you got to take a little bit of a chance, forget it. Oh, yes. yes. That could then it would be all over. Cost you the main event. He doesn't want to go on the podium after this race. For those of you just joining Supercross, you don't get the big bucks if you don't make the main event. You might get a Racer X gas card, and that's it. And Campbell did give it everything he had. He's close. The checkers are flying now for Johnson. The winner of the last chance qualifier, Provoli, will also go to the main event. The hard-fought battle lost, though, by Campbell, number 75. The stars and the stripes on his helmet. There's Johnson, the victor. Spots right there. I mean, you've got to hit those perfect. So some of the guys like to try to aim and, and miss a rut, but somewhere through there, you end up hitting one. It just takes excellent balance to try to keep that bike straight. You want to stay a little bit back behind the bike and squeeze it with your knees and try to keep that rear end from going so much side to side. Jessamine. 28 was impressive in that first heat race. You know, Chad did eventually get him, but he didn't get him the way I thought he would. And yeah. He took off right on his tail. Short pulling in right next to him, and there's Chad Reed. Let's check out the Honda starting grid. First of all, let it off with uh, 259, James Stewart, and then Chad Reed, Travis Elliott, Brandy Jessamine, David Pingree, Woods, Short, Antonez, Brock Sellers, a one-time winner this year. Steve Boniface, Danny Smith, Chas Reed, Christopher Gossler, Michael Brown, Matt Walker, Hadsel, Buckaloo, Smith, Preston, Byrne, Tedesco, and Casey Lytle. There's Lytle. 
just barely getting into the main event, taking the fourth spot in the LCQ. You got to like having these guys lined up right next to each other because it seems like if something happens to one of them, it might happen a little bit to the other guy. And they, if they don't get great starts, they can come through the pack together and be pretty sucked. James, but credit for one whole shot this year. He says, hey, I, I got another one. I know I got another one. <laughs> he needs it now. He needs it bad. Chad Reed usually gets a fourth or fifth place start. Sideways, we're set to go. The 125 shootout from Las Vegas is underway. Let's see who gets the power eight hole shot. Stewart tucked it around the inside. It didn't look good at first. Hard to see who's down in the gully down there. It's Gossler number 90. Boy, what an opportunity here. He's thought a couple of times this year that he had it won. Houston, he thought he had that one. One other one, I can't remember for sure, but Stewart already making a block pass. We're going to swim a little further. And Travis Elliott in second place. Stewart putting the pass on Bingry. Uh, oh, that's Boniface. Yeah. Boniface. So on how, the KTM number 36. How Stewart was able to get around Reed, who just kind of elbowed in front of him on the start, got ahead of him in the first corner. And, Good decisions that time. Got to the pack, excellent. He's got a pretty good distance now on Reed. He's still buried back in the pack a bit. Gossler, Danny Smith, who made a podium finally in the last race of the year after an up and down injury riddled season is in second. Gossler, Smith, Elliott, Stewart, Bonaface, Tedesco. And look at this, here comes Stewart to the inside. And just turns on a dime after that. Look at that. Whips the front end over. Crowd going. This kid is unbelievable. Next, he's taking on Danny Smith all of a sudden. And then he had worked on that earlier. If he couldn't do that triple coming from the inside, he doubles the next two and then the next two into the corner. So the rhythm actually still turns out pretty fast. And he's closing a little bit on Gosler, who's been the only rider this season in his division that has been able to match Stewart's speed. Gosler has had a lot of speed this year. Got a rider down over this triple. Oh, no. Oh. Looks like Buckaloo might have got caught up. Either that or Anthony. Oh, no, that's short. He just gets out short? of the way. Number 69, yes. The fans are on their seats. On the seats of James Stewart now. Takes Gosler. Down the rhythm section that nobody else has been able to jump. Now, this is the triple where I was talking about they had problems. That kind of caught the corner of my eye. And I got mixed up as to where they were on the racetrack. Looks like it might have been a KTM rider down right there. But Stewart, unbelievable. And see how fast this kid is able to make up for a bad start. This is the rhythm section. Gosler's getting through there quick, but it's not the same as tripling into that corner, as you can see in the crowd, just getting their money's worth here, watching Stewart do what he does best, ride flawless and work his way up front. But, got a long ways to go. He had a perfect race in his last race, as perfect as you can have at Salt Lake City. Now watch the pressure stretch. was off. So he'll stretch this lead out on Gosler, who's back there going, how the heck am I gonna jump all that stuff now? pretty hard to make up something that huge to take that much nerve, get it figured out in the main event. You can see the difference now, Stewart pulling away. Let's see what happens through the whoops. This is Andrew Short getting to the back of Danny Smith there, it looks like. Or I think that was Jessamine. Yeah. Preston just getting like around him. But out in front, number 259, James Stewart. Went out tonight to prove himself the fastest, the best of the best, despite not taking the title. You got Reed now starting to close on the battle. He's, there he is. And Nate Smith in front of him. And just a little ways up to Gosler, but they've got pretty much this entire straightaway up to the leader, Stewart. And remember, the 125 shootout final is 15 laps. Reed cuts to the inside of Danny Smith. Chad Reed now moving into second place. Now he's got that rhythm section dialed Third in. Third place, I should say. 
So I, I said a couple of times that by mistake, actually, Stewart's the only guy jumping that rhythm section. Reed has it figured out now. And he's going to need it figured out if he plans on catching Stewart. He's, Stewart could go a little bit into cruise mode with this huge lead he has, already almost a five-second lead. But there you see Stewart going over the finish line, going the other way. So that gives you an idea of the lead that, that Reed has got to make up. About a 5.3-second lead. Gosler in second place with Reed in third. Watch him close this time on Gosler. Tedesco is battling for fifth and fourth. See Reed? He triples right there. Triples again into the corner. And all of a sudden, he's not getting over it as clean as Stewart, but it's still a lot faster, and Gosler's got company. Preston, the West champion, is in ninth. He's got Stewart in front of him. But right now, the champion of the East, Chad Reed, is trying to pick up on the second place rider of the East, or the West, I should say, James Stewart. Stewart, coming through the same section, just ran into one of those PJ1 tough blocks off to the side. So he was running right next to the edge of the track, trying to find a good line. Here comes uh, Reed now, testing Gasper. Reed trying to pick his spot. Doesn't want to wait too long. His spot's coming up right on the straightaway. He's got to, he can't be following him, though. And he couldn't do it. He wasn't able to triple through there. Gosler was smart. He knew something was going on. He knew he caught him. And he just went right down the middle of the straightaway and tried to cover it. So there was no way that Reed could make the move. He lost more time to Stewart out front. Now they're almost 10 seconds back. So it almost takes another mistake by James Stewart if Chad Reed hopes to win the shootout. Stewart is Stewart when he's on. He's so fast, and he puts the pressure on everybody. And you can't even see him in the picture. He's already going the other way. Can you imagine how that feels for these guys that come out of a corner, and they're like, where the heck is the leader? The, the important thing we've seen about James Stewart is that he's, he's a learner. He doesn't stand still. He, he keeps analyzing. And, and comes back for more. There's Reed in back of Gosler. With Jeremy uh, Albrick, Stewart's mechanic. Let's go to Jeff. Jeremy, you got to be happy with Bubba. Have you ever seen a more exciting rider? No, I mean, he's obviously real fun to watch, and he's doing a great job out there. He came here, and he's learned every week, and he's doing exactly what we came here to do. So what was the game plan going into this? Uh, basically, just to ride his own race and not worry about, you know, East Coast, West Coast, all that stuff, just trying to do the best he can for himself and, you know, just work on his technique and doing what he knows how to do. I see it on the pit board. You're, you're bad. That's awesome. Yeah, he is bad. All right. <laughs> Back to you guys. He is. And uh, that's his warmer mechanic, Jeff Emig. Yeah. Jeff won the championship. In 97, right here. Wrapped it up, so. Here's the battle for second. Chad Reed in the timing section with Gusler on his tail. Now, you know, there were so many people talking about how, you know, Chad is so smart, he's crafty, and he doesn't make mistakes. And he got the start. He was ahead of Stewart at one point. But it was Stewart's intelligence and good choices putting himself in the right place in that opening lap to get the gap on Chad in traffic and set this up right now. Chad may match Stewart's lap times out front from here on out. He may even be faster, but he's got to make up 12 seconds. And I don't think there's enough time. Chad Reed, one win away from a perfect season in his rookie year racing in America. He started off with an impressive six wins, clinching the 125 East in St. Louis. And of course, all during the year, these races can be heard live on the webcast. ESPN.com, keyword is Supercross. The lead right now by Stewart. Chad's got to be going. I think it's Chad going the other way. I mean, uh, Stewart going the other way. Chad can see that. Chad can't jumped. miss that pink outfit going by. No. Nope, you can't. He's, he knows that he's had the speed. Their lap times are similar, but that last lap, actually, Chad's was a little bit faster by a tenth, but it's not going to be enough with the laps that remain. Steve Boniface walked off holding his shoulder. He's with Terry Boyd right now. Steve, I see you're holding your left shoulder, which seems to be the problem. Yeah, I question uh, the beginning, and uh, 
I hurt a little bit my shoulder, but I hope it's not too bad. You just hoping to like maybe rest it tonight and get ready for the outdoors next week. Yeah, sure. Yeah, at this point, yeah, it just makes sense, Davey, for those guys to head back and get ready for next week when you're that far out. On a face, an early surprise in the 125 East, getting two podiums in the first three races, moved into third place in the standings, and then crashed early. Last place start at Pontiac, came back to 18th, and he finished out the season fifth in the standings. And how about this? Finish. Mike Brown is, might be lapped by James Stewart. He's not going to like that. These guys square off next week for the first round of the Outdoor Series, and to be getting lapped by a guy that he hopes to beat next week. Obviously, Mike's having some trouble. Stewart with tremendous focus going through those wounds. He's going through everywhere. It doesn't look like he's backed off much. He's knocked several tough blocks off the side of the racetrack since I've had my eyes on him. The Honda stopwatch showing the interval between Stewart and Reed on the last lap, 11.5 seconds. This lap, 10.3. He's got to step it up, though, with only about three and a half laps left in this race. Well, Reed's doing all he can do. He's trying to keep his pace going and continue to triple through the rhythm section, which he has been doing, so that if Stewart does make one of those mistakes, he'll be close enough to take advantage of it. But it looks like Stewart's night. Watch him through these whoops coming up. Uh, There's Preston in seventh. Trying to chase down Matt Walker, who, I'll tell you what, coming up. Uh, got another half a lap. The whoop section, I thought they were coming to it right there. Uh, Walker went down in the first practice session this afternoon and just laid there thinking, I thought he might have broken his collarbone. And uh, I talked to Dr. John Bodner. He said he wouldn't be surprised if he broke a couple of ribs and he goes down again. Oh, that's got to hurt. He's holding it. Yeah, this is how it looked this afternoon. And I was about to say, what a gutsy performance to come back in. Bodner. I talked to him, he said he wouldn't be surprised, like I said, if he had a couple of broken ribs and he just takes another shot. That's Walker. A great breakthrough win this year. One of five different winners in the 125 West. Looks like he wants to get back on the bike. This kid is tough. Checking it out again. Right. Couldn't hard, really tell what happened there. Preston, other than, Preston lucky to get around it. Yeah, actually. Preston just had good reaction time right there to stay clear of it. And here's the leader. Will it be his fourth win of the season? He didn't win a championship, but what a what a rookie season at 16 years old. And you know, you talked about how smart he is, and he's a quick learner and all that, and and uh, he is. But some of those crash things that uh, we talked to his mechanic about not too long ago. He didn't really learn from that. He kept on making those same mistakes, and it surprised me a little bit because every time I talk to him, I'm so impressed with how far ahead his thinking is and his planning and how much he knows about his competitors and seems to know their strengths and weaknesses probably as good or better than they do. Did you see the roost of that camera? Yep. Everyone's going, man, that Kawasaki is fast. I don't know how it is sized up with everybody else's bike, but he makes it look fast, you know, because of the way he rides in the power band. He's always in the right gear. The beginning of the season didn't go with the Pro Circuit Kawasaki support team, but went under the big rig of the Chevy trucks. The white flag is out. This is the final lap for James Story. Can he keep that tradition alive of a non-champion winning the shootout at the end of the season? Looks like he will. Ramsey's done it twice, Pastrana once, and they didn't win those years. This could be four in a row. He cools it a little bit. Besides, I don't need to triple through this thing again. Even though his lead shrunk to eight seconds, he still feels like he's got this one in the bag. He just said, all right, I want to be the fastest of the fast, not the best of the best. Whipping it on James Stewart. Early round standing on their feet in honor of this young 16-year-old in his first Supercross season. This is the last kind of risky section. This loop section and the next one, if he gets through all this, he's got it. Stewart, Reed, Gasler, Tedesco, Dan Smith up to fifth. As we're on the final lap, Preston has moved into six. The Tuckers and the 125 shootout victory for James Stewart.
And Reed, he did a good job. He stayed, he rode hard all the way to the end, but he's not going to be happy with the way that first lap went. <laughs> kind of laughing at the way James came over the finish line, Jeff. Like he had something in mind, didn't really go as planned. He kind of held his hand up like, ah, well, whatever. <laughs> his first win as a pro was in San Diego. And he caps the season with the Dave Combs Memorial 125 shootout. That's going to take the sting a little bit out of them losing that title. And there's the sportsmanship. Look at that. Chad Reed from Australia. James Stewart from Haines City, Florida. And Christopher Gessler out of California coming up number 90, taking the podium, the final podium spot in third. Tedesco is a strong fourth. Let's go to Terry Boyd. Well, we've got Travis Preston trying to get the helmet off. You carry the number one plate, but I'll tell you, it probably wasn't the kind of ending you wanted here to the 2002 season. Yeah, the uh, heat race kind of screwed me up. Had a bad start in the main, and uh, I rode my butt off, though. I'm happy. I rode a solid 15 laps. Do you feel confident now when you're wrapping up the the end, what we effectively call the indoor series? You're going outdoors. That's a lot longer time on the bike. I feel really good. My Honda works so good. I just hop on it and go. That makes it easy, doesn't it? Makes it real easy. Let me ask you this, Travis. The number one thing going through your mind out there, you know that you got the number one plate. Were you pushing harder, or like you said, you were just content? Um, that main event, I rode my butt off. I probably had the fastest lap times that I did all day. I came way through the pack, and I thought, I'm, I'm really happy with the way I rode. I mean, well, I didn't win, but. Best of luck to you on the outdoor, Travis. We had to go up to the stage with Jamie Little. All right, Las Vegas, they're making their way on over to the podium. Let's hear it for them. Lots of celebrating going on, lots of bragging rights to be had. James Stewart, all smiles, the first one walking down. Come on, Chris Gosler, get up here. Chad Reed, come on, you guys. All right, what the heck? You guys want me to talk to this guy, James Bubba Stewart? James, you're the first one up here, so you're going to be the first one I'm going to talk to. I got to tell you, you're not the man with the number one plate at the end of the series, but you just took home the bragging rights as the fastest 125 rider in the world. That's got to make you feel good. Yeah, um, I didn't get out to the greatest start, and I just kind of worked my way up through the laps. And uh, I triple, triple past Gosser over there. He wasn't doing it the whole race, and uh, I'm so happy. James, I talked to you a couple weeks ago. You said the main thing, you know, you're working on patience. Your dad's telling you patience. We saw it last week. We saw it tonight. Patience paid off. You kept it on two wheels the entire race. Yeah, definitely. I mean, the track was kind of slick out there, and I had to keep it going. I mean, you couldn't charge the corners real hard like I wanted to, but uh, I was out front the whole time. Did you get a little bit more nervous tonight knowing that you're going up against Travis Preston, Chad Reed? Yeah, definitely. I mean, Chad Reed is one of the, the best three scores out of the best 125 riders. And uh, I wish we kind of got up there and did battle, but I just happened to get out front and it was good. And you took it home. Congratulations. The crowd was behind you. You guys put in a great race for us tonight. Thanks a lot. Thanks. Uh, first, I'd like to thank all the fans out Las Vegas. Thanks. Hey, Tony Haynes, if you're listening out there, hey, this one's for you. All right. Thanks, James. All right, we got the other boys up here. Chris Gosler, come on over here. Let's hear it for this guy. Second, third place finish. He takes home his second $1,000 Powerade hole shot. Chris, you started off the season first round, third place. You ended third place. Not bad. Yeah, I had a, a great year this year. I mean, I learned a lot, and uh, hopefully I carry it into next year and just win that championship. I mean, I fought hard that race, and I got a little bit winded, but... I still hung in there. Bubba rode a great race. Chad Reed rode, rode a good race. And uh, I just want to thank all you fans for coming out here. I mean, we can totally hear you guys cheering out there. Uh, without you guys, this wouldn't be possible. So thanks a lot. And I'd like to thank uh, Amsoil, Doc Martens, Camp Competition Accessories, uh, Scott Goggles, uh, my mechanic, girlfriend, everybody who came out here and helped me. My mom and dad. And just everybody, thanks a lot. All right, Chris Gossler, it's always a pleasure. Congratulations. Thank you. All right, let's talk to this guy, the only number one plate up here on the podium, Mr. Chad Reed. Chad, what a race. I know it wasn't exactly what you wanted right off the bat, but you had to work for it, and you ended up second. Yeah, you know, second's uh, not what we wanted, but, uh, you know, James rode a great race. He had a good start and uh, cleared out early, and uh, I want to congratulate him on a great race. And, you know, this was a lot of fun. I enjoyed this race a lot, and, uh, you know, I'm looking forward to the outdoors. Uh, Sure, I wanted to win, but you can't win them all, and I want to congratulate him once again, and, uh, and also the crowd for uh, you know, cheering us on. 
Chad, this is the first time that you went up against James. Did it surprise you how fast this kid is? You know, I've been watching him all year just like everybody else has, and, you know, he's young, and uh, he's definitely fast, and he's got a, definitely a good future. And uh, But, uh, you know, tonight I just want to thank uh, Yamaha and Yamaha Troy for a great bike, and, you know, parts unlimited, Thor, AST, Smith Goggles, uh, my girlfriend Ellie for her support, and the rest of the team. Uh, that's about it. Chad, you came out here this year, tremendous 125 series. Already you're leaving us. You're going to the 250 class next year. We wish you all the success in the world. Yeah, thanks, Jamie. I just want to once again give us a huge thanks to uh, Vegas. I've enjoyed my stay here and uh, can't wait to come back next year. All right, we'll see Chad Reed. You guys, congratulations to all of our champions. This is the Suzuki results page for the 125 shootout for the season of 2002. Stewart puts his name into history. Reed and Gossler on the podium. Tedesco, Danny Smith a good ride. Look at Michael Byrne in seventh place in front of Sellards and Jessamine and Woods. There you see Elliott and Boniface at the end and Walker placing 17th, staying on the track despite that 17, that uh, serious crash. James Stewart with the Las Vegas Showgirls. Taking a look at Stewart crossing the finish line. I don't know what they call that thing. <laughs> but he won. That's the main, that's what matters. That's got to give him tremendous confidence going into next weekend to start his first race outdoors, 125 Nationals. The champagne, champagne flows on the podium. All those guys spray everybody down. The 250s are starting to take their parade lap. All, all three of them too young to drink it. Let's go to Terry downstairs. We're standing with James Stewart Sr. Time to start up the chainsaw, my friend. <laughs> Mowing them down. Now I got to tell you, as a father of five, I know my kids are at home watching right now. That's not an easy job being a dad. I can't imagine how tough it is to have a superstar like your son also to be a dad, too. Yes, it, it's real tough right there, you know. All I can tell you as a parent is just stick with your kid and trust in him, you know. He's, it, it, it'll go a long way with you. Let me ask you this, man. With a kid as much talent as James Jr. has, do you give him any advice from time to time? Yeah, I mean, you never stop learning. You're never too old to learn, and we talk about a lot about different different strategies and different things, and we went back after the Dallas race, and we got back together as a family and regroup, and I think the last two races showed the difference. How do you feel about this guy now when he comes back as a 17-year-old KG veteran? Well, you know, I mean, he's still my kid. That's, that's how I look at it. You know, you got to kind of grow with your kid. You know, they're going to change when they get to a certain age. You learn to grow with them. Let me ask you this. Who pays for dinner now when you go out to eat? Hey, he's cheap. I can tell you that. <laughs> Glad to see, in this, uh, see the smiles on your face. Congratulations. Back in the pits now with Jeff Emig. All right, you guys, I'm here with Michael Byrne. We only seen a glimpse of him at the very first East Coast race, then he got hurt. So now you come back for the East-West shootout, finish the seventh. Yeah, it, was, it wasn't too bad. You know, I'm pretty happy with how I finished. Uh, I fell off in the, in the heat race trying to, you know, go for third to pass two guys on that triple down the back straight and uh, come up a little short and went down and then the throttle was stuck open and I couldn't finish. So I uh, went to the last chance and then, uh, you know, I had a really bad pick of the grid and just just try to do my best and work my way through. You know, I haven't ridden Supercross in 12 weeks, so I'm pretty happy. How does it feel to race again? It's got to be exciting. Yeah, it's definitely a buzz. You know, I whole shot the, you know, the last chance qualifier, and, and like the adrenaline just started running again. And uh, that's something that I've, you know, I've been missing out on, like I said, for the last three months. So I'm really happy to be back. All right. Well, Michael Byrne, you guys will see him next year. Back to you guys. Great lap for the 250s underway. There's Jeremy McGrath on the Yamaha. And Ricky Carmichael surveying the course. And, uh, David, I know you had a comment on the Stewart situation. Well, I just, you know, it's been a learning experience for James, but, but I really think that, you know, especially what we saw with, with James's father walking out of the stadium there in Dallas, you know, now that I'm a father, I, I get a little bit wound up. If my son doesn't jump a double, I know he can. And, and it's got to be hard, but I think it's a learning experience for big James as well. And it's, I'm glad they had to kind of go through this this, uh, this harsh learning curve of what happened to him in Dallas to lose that championship the way he did. But, but uh, you know, they stick with it, and they got a good thing going over there and seem to all be having a lot of fun. In talking with James earlier, he was uh, telling me that he's really glad that uh, 
those diverse circumstances happen like they did so early because it did lead to better communication for the family as a whole. Just about set now for the starting situation now for the 250s. The starting grid as Jeremy McGrath gets set on the gate. Let's take a look. Ricky Carmichael, Jeremy McGrath, Ezra Lust looking good here in Las Vegas. Ernesto Fonseca, Stefan Roncata, Kyle Lewis. He got a great start in qualifying. Sebastian Tortelli, David Villeman, who ended up the season second in points. Nathan Ramsey, a winner this year. Nicholas Way, he's on his way to top privateer. Michael Young, Isaiah Johnson, James Pavone. And the rest of the group with the 250s. Let's listen in if uh, Skip will tell us that. Saying hammer on these guys. I'll bet you he'll say something about it. It's 18 minutes, that's it. Don't leave anything out there on the track. Now he's got to step away now. The 30-second board has been up for a bit. Jeremy knows how important the start is. He's Waiting need for that 30-second board to go sideways. There's some of the fans, Jeremy McGrath fans here in Vegas. It's sideways. Five to ten seconds, and the final race of the 2002 Supercross season will be underway. The Power 8 hole shot. Who will get it? Looked like Kyle Lewis again. It looked like Kyle Lewis again. That would be his second. And Carmichael, I believe, tripled his way up front. There's McGrath number two. Number 21 is Ron Conna. There's Carmichael in the lead with Lewis in second place. Lewis number 23. Carmichael number four. Jeremy got shuffled mid-pack somewhere. Not coming out of that first straight away looking good. Carmichael out front. Who was a second faster than Jeremy at one point in his heat race. Take another look at the start. Jeremy over there to the left kind of gets pinched off. Lewis coming in from the outside in the orange helmet, but Ricky had the line down the next straightaway. Jeremy getting bumped around right there. Did not come out good. From the helmet cam now, David. Keith Johnson right there gets closed off right away, coming from the outside. Tortelli right there, 13. Villaman and Roncata getting into it. Everybody trying to tuck around the inside. You see Lust right there, just ahead. He's in third. He's in third. It's Carmichael, Lewis, Lust, Fonseca, Villaman, Waugh, Ramsey, Roncata, Lang, McGrath is in 10. But a long 20-lap race for these two babies. Here comes Ezra Lust. He hit and he hops by Lewis, number 23. Now Lust had some speed in practice. He got a couple of good lap times in there, chasing down Carmichael in practice. The way he's been riding lately, he's got... He's going to need just a little bit more, I think, to get around Ricky, especially with Ricky out front like this. But he's been getting closer and closer to a win. This is his last chance. Kyle Lewis, incidentally, with a good chance for third place in the top privateers trophy. That would uh, garner him about $10,000. Of course, all the races are heard live on the webcast. ESPN.com, keyword Supercross. Lusk tripling his way down. He can't do that one into the corner, and Carmichael just did, so I'm loading up that gap. So, Fonseca in a pretty good position here. There's Philippe number 12. Fonseca number 24. How about Kyle Lewis tonight? Man, what got into the, the start? I know it makes a big difference, but, you know, we've seen him get a start before. He gets shuffled back pretty quick here. He's riding excellent. Of course, he got stuck in the mud in Salt Lake City with an accident. This is the final race of the Vance Triple Crown as well, which can the, 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 big, uh, the big prize can't be won because one rider has to win all three races throughout the season, but the $25,000 still in stake. And it looks like Ricky will get that. He can hold on where he is. Pretty much whoever finishes in front of the other guy, Villain or Carmichael. Next to 25 grand. Not even very much money for these guys anymore. <laughs> <laughs> really? When you figure that Chad Reed has only been a rookie in the 125s, and he's got a multi-million dollar contract starting next year. So I'm going to go ahead and say that I think the four-stroke has a little bit of an advantage here. And these guys are not just all over Lewis. You know, Lewis is holding his own here pretty good. And he is on the Honda four-stroke. So that thing hooks up pretty good in places, and I think it works really good in the whoops. 
They're getting a little bit of wheel spin across the tops of those things. Hard to stay on the top. Here comes Ramsey behind this group. 25. Ramsey, 25. Billiman testing Lewis. They come over the finish line jump. Billiman comes out on top. He's got Lusk in front of him. It's Carmichael Lusk, Billiman and Lewis with Fonseca and Ramsey knocking at the door. Carmichael just going the other way off the triple turn to 54.2, Lusk 54.9, which is Lusk's fastest lap so far. Still not fast enough. That's Villama number 12. Three wins, 12 podiums in 14 races. With uh, fourth places in the other two. Very impressive until you consider what might have been. Injured before Daytona, couldn't race. Lost the points lead to Ricky, and Ricky never looked back. Number 24, that's Fonseca. Number 23 is Kyle Lewis. Number 25, Nathan Ramsey. Lewis really starting to feel the heat now. This is what it happened to him a little bit sooner, but he did a good job to hang up there up front a lot longer. Top five, still a possibility. There is much an added attitude change. There's uh, Ramsey now coming in front of Lewis. With the uh, altitude here, as far as jetting in 250s, there now, is quite a bit of difference in the 125. It's just the, the dry weather. It changes it just a little bit, but these guys making a lot more horsepower than they were last week in Salt Lake at 5,000 feet. McGrath has caught this freight train battle pretty far back. You can see right behind Ron Cotter right now. So it's Carmichael, Lusk. Watch Tortelli. The Tortelli and Huffman connecting. He's just standing there like, well, I can't pick my bike up until Huffman gets off of me. Not a nice way to end the Supercross season, especially after finishing third last week. McGrath trying to take on, uh, that's uh, 21, Roncata. In the last lap, Roncata's teammate lost, carved a little bit of time out, out of uh, Carmichael's lead. Skip Norfolk on the team radio. He's wearing goggles right now because the wind has picked up and started to blow the dust around quite a bit. There's no way in the world Jeremy can win this thing from where he sits right now, but podium, I suppose, is still up for grabs. 55.8, MC, 55.8. 54.4, RC, 54.4. RC out front. 13.3. Turn to 54.1. McGrath not quite up to that pace. But it's the lap he just turned, he should be able to catch up, maybe battle with Fonseca for fourth. And you never know if Billman might maybe make a mistake down the stretch. He'd like to stand on the podium at his last race, but he's going to have to really hump it to get there. He's been on the podium three times this year, and that, of course, kept the string alive, going at least three podiums every year for 10 consecutive seasons. And right now, this, I can't help but think about the battle he had with. Carmichael last year, how hard those guys were riding. And right now, just because of that start, he's 20 seconds down on Carmichael at the moment. Let's go trackside and Terry Boyd, Terry. Well, another injury for Sebastian Tortelli. The thumb looks a little hamburgered out. It's uh, That seems to be your Supercross regimen, always overcoming injuries. Yeah, I've been, you know, it's always hard. And I just, you know, just crash and ring my bell a little bit. So I just, you know, it's the last race. I just prefer pull off and, you know, get ready for next championship, you know. Finger is not bad, it's just, you know, cut a little bit, so you know, it be good for next weekend. Well, that's the best and smart thing for you to do to pull off the truck. Guys, like you said, he got his bell rung a little bit, the thumb's a little bit banged up. He wants to save it for next week at Glen Helen. Carmichael with a five-second lead on the last lap on Ezra Lusk. On board with Keith Johnson. Over the finish line, jump. But Carmichael had tripled in his heat race. No need for it now, even though Lusk is standing right back there keeping that five second gap. He doesn't have to do it. This is where Lusk and Ricky are really making up time all the way down that straightaway with the triples. Here comes the official triple, the big one. The smaller one. The other big triple. 
Jack's holding up pretty good tonight. Last year it was really hard to slick. Just the dirt clods kind of scattered around the top. A little bit of that going on in that corner. Well, it looks like a rough ride in that area. You see some of the, sh the dark spots. Yeah, blue mark. We call it blue groove. Starting to develop in the whoop section. And that's a lap. It goes by pretty quick, but it, when you're out front like Carmichael is right now, it seems like it takes forever. Carmichael, Lusk, Philippine, Ramsey, Fonseca, McGrath has moved into six. Brancata, Lewis, Way, Johnson, Clark, Lang, Bavoni, Young, Waugh, Huffman, Armstrong in seventh, Johnson in 18th, and Evans in 19th. Lusk, that last lap, still just a few tenths slower than Carmichael, so the lead is growing a little bit. Watch Ezra's line right here. Watch coming up. Jumps all the way over that. It's like quadrupling in there, but he blows that triple into the corner. So Carmichael's been more consistent down that straightaway. And that's where those two tenths of a second are coming from. Two tenths here, four tenths there. Ricky's just in cruise mode right now. He's pushing it hard, obviously, with, with Lusk trying to close the gap. But it's not like it, we've seen him coming from behind like he did in Pontiac. He was riding so hard and on the edge. We're at the halfway mark. Ten laps to go for Ricky Carmichael. Carmichael gaining Honda their first Supercross championship uh, since McGrath in 1996. Let's see if Ricky can get this rhythm section dialed in. That's the first triple. The next one, all the way into the corner. Every lap, he gets that dialed in. There's Lust coming at the top of the screen, if he gets it. Looks like he got it all the way into the corner. But Carmichael's got this whole next, next straightaway on Lust. And so when you lose the guy, you lose him in your sights, it's hard to really stay motivated. Like, yeah, I think I can catch him. Ricky just defies so many different things. He sits a little bit further back than most riders. Kind of drops his elbows a little bit more than other riders. His handlebars are probably, yeah, I know he's smaller, but his handlebars are low. His rear end sags lower than most. His seat almost doesn't exist. The Honda guys are like, man, I don't really want to show this bike. We don't like the way it looks, but it's effective. Last lap statistics for the two of them. Lusk is picking it up a bit in second place, but he's still 6.49 seconds behind. And he blows that triple into the corner again that lap. He might make up for it a little bit as he enters that straightaway. He enters it slightly different than Ricky and makes up some time quadrupling, but overall lap, he keeps losing time. That Actually, that last lap, he made up. He got four tenths back. Carmichael looking for his 11th win on the season. His 26th career victory. It'll be 25 in two straight years. Ricky just keeps in and up where he needs to be. Keep winning. Keeps getting the start he needs, and when he doesn't, he works so hard to get back up to the front. It's got to be so frustrating for a guy like Villaman or even McGrath in this race. He's running sixth right now. He did get around Roncada. We saw Villaman battling with a little bit earlier. But for Jeremy, who won his heat, he's been riding well. He's got, Skip said, he's got that 20 laps back. But the season's just about over for him. And, once again, he's going to ride off the track and see Ricky up there on the podium. <laughs> Man, why can't I get that back? Last year, it was Ricky Carmichael here in Las Vegas. The tied Jeremy's season records of most wins in a season with 14 and most consecutive wins in one season with 13. But here tonight, Ricky Carmichael could break Jeremy's win record in two consecutive seasons. With Skip Norfolk as Terry Boy. Skip, I think he's going to have to throw out the uh, pit board here real quickly for Jeremy McGrath. You can see what he's saying right here. 55-2, he wants a little more out. And as soon as he comes over, the big question we're going to have to ask Skip is how disappointed is Jeremy going to be if he doesn't win here tonight? It doesn't look good for the overall win for Jeremy. Going to go winless this season. Here comes Skip. Skip, the quick question. How disappointed 
disappointed are you and Jeremy going to be of going winless here in 2002? Sometimes that's the way it happens. You know, it's uh, been a little bit of a struggle. Uh, it's not looking good right now for a win. Uh, but we'll find out what he's made of on the offseason and into next season. So it's been a tough year all the way around. We wanted to win one bad. It just doesn't look like it's going to happen for us tonight. Well, there's your answer for you guys. You know what I like, though, is that Jeremy is riding hard. He's not going, you know what, this isn't panning out. The heck with it. You know, he, he charged through everybody, and he's got Fonseca right in front of him. Fonseca actually bobbled through the whoops the last time, come through, through this section, actually. He sideways that time, too. But Jeremy's still fighting right now, and that's really all you can ask. If you don't get the start, you know, it doesn't always go your way, but at least fight till the end. They're battling for fifth place right now. Fonseca has it nailed down until Jeremy makes something happen here. So much for that record of 10 in a row winning at least one race. That's going to come to an end at nine. That's going to be pretty hard to top. His record is nine. It's Jeremy's. Carmichael has only seven more left. Mm -hmm. A lot more. So here goes. Look at Jeremy. He's got to look. He's just making Ernesto think a little bit. This probably brings back some memories of these guys. I was watching them out just at the practice track in Southern California. Look at this. <laughs> Jeremy McGrath makes the move in the fifth. Carmichael in the upper right is our leader by 6.7 seconds on Lusk. I was watching Carmichael and Fon when Fonseca first started riding his Honda. And uh, these guys were out riding together in friendly battles. You know, you think about that stuff when you get in a race like this, battling each other. Can Jeremy now catch up with the four stroke of Ramsey before it's too late? He's got that hole straight away in front of him up to Ramsey. Ron Cotta trying to make a move on Fonseca now, number 21 on the Kawasaki. That would be the battle for six, of course. So Jeremy had a pretty good run going. In Salt Lake, he had a shot at and uh, possibly getting it from Billiman, finishing on the podium again, and then he got into a little scuffle with Darcy Lang lapping him, ended up going down. Dropped him back, no podium. And here again, even though he's putting a solid ride, doesn't look like he's getting to get the podium. Kind of a lousy way to end the season for him, but he shouldn't start so good either. I mean, he has some spots in there. The crowd still likes the guy. It looks like Bud Light is gonna stick with him. McGrath, Fonseca, Rincata, bang, 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 through the whoops. There's Ron Cotta, the last of that chain. As we go back to Ricky Carmichael, only a couple laps away from his 26th career victory. It would be his 11th victory of this season. It almost seems kind of weird to see Ricky go straight through these. Gets through there pretty straight. Here's Nick Way. He's get, he gets the big check of the top privateer for the season at the banquet tomorrow night. He is the only privateer to make every main event this season. Another privateer taking us around the track. There goes Villeman. Watch, the, watch how Villeman handles his next straight. Watch how fast he disappears. Double that. Triple. Triple. Yep, he triples again and all the way into the corner. Just like that, Billman's got about 40, 50 yards. Those guys are fast. You know, and as a privateer, you, you see those guys come by and you're like, holy cow, it can take me a while to get up to that speed. And Ramsey, it looks like he's closing the gap a little bit on Billman for a potential podium. And remember Kyle Lewis up front? Number 23. He's getting lapped now by Carmichael. So he had a, he had a good run going early, but... Carmichael gets the white flag for Ricky Carmichael. One left to go. And Ricky once again helps put the Williams Supercross factory team Honda back on the winning track. You don't get good odds here in Vegas on Ricky, do I don't think so. He's win 13 anything. wins this year. Ricky has 11. They have had three different winners on the season with LaRocco taking the first one and Ramsey the last one before this race. We're not a show for the fans now. Ricky can whip it. 
He throws that thing so far upside down sometimes that even the other riders kind of take a deep breath, like, how did he land that? This is just getting to be He's on cruise control right now. Kind of a bore for him winning these things so easily like this. One more straightaway. Pyrotechnics light up for Joey. Here in Las Vegas, and Ricky Carmichael breaks the record of the most wins in back-to-back -back seasons, 25 in two seasons. He breaks Jeremy's record of 1996-97 in splendor here in Vegas. Good run for Lusk. It would have been nice for him to try to get at least one win on the season, but he rode his tail off. What a solid main event, his last lap. Still pretty fast, trying to do anything he could to get that win. There he is congratulating Ricky. These guys used to be great friends. There's Villeman, that's the whole podium right there. They gotta be happy to wrap the season standing up on the podium. Let's check in. Let's check in with Jeff Emig. Jeff. All right, you guys, I'm with Chad Watts. Excellent season. Yeah, I mean, it started out a little rocky, but uh, it's a battle we had to overcome, and luckily we came out on top, and this is a sweet way to carry to Anaheim next year. Yeah, no doubt. Now, what? I mean, you guys just work so hard to, you know, to gain those points and to stay so consistent. What is it? What is it about you guys' uh, uh, you know, team that's, you know, that's making it work so well? We got a bunch of guys over there at Honda are really a good backbone to fall on. A lot of the experience, and Ricky's got the experience, and uh, we both got the drive, and I really go home with a bad attitude if we lose. So uh, with a bad attitude, it does me no good, so we must win. All right. There you go, another win for these guys. Thanks. Ezra Lusk also getting his best uh, appearance of the uh, season. Let's go to Terry. Well, we're standing here with Kyle Lewis in front of the hometown crowd, the Las Vegas crowd picking up the $1,500 Powerade Hole Shot Award tonight. Yeah, the Yoshimura 450 was just awesome. My hole shot, the qualifier, and the main event, they had nothing for it. Except uh, I didn't have anything for them. <laughs> Let me ask you this. David Bailey pointed out, hey, when I got into Kyle Lewis tonight, and something that uh, maybe you didn't make public was the fact you were racing a lot of the season with a pretty severe so shoulder injury. Yeah, I uh, got off at the beginning of the year about 95 miles an hour going down a hill. I hit a rock, and it bit me off three weeks before the first round. So uh, tonight you're almost back to 100% as we get ready to go outdoors, but congratulations on picking up the $1,500 from Power 8. Thanks a lot. You know, uh, I got to thank Moto Triple X. DGY, um, Yoshimura, Smith, um, you know, we have a big squad. Outdoor events. Well, best of luck, Kyle. It's been a great season hanging out with you and showing the true spirit of a champion there, riding with the injuries and getting that $1,500 from Powerade. Ricky Carmichael has just made his way up here. He wants to stop and say congratulations to Kyle Lewis. Kyle. Uh, RC, I'll tell you, you just broke Jeremy McGrath's record for the most wins and two consecutive seasons. Uh, it's just been a phenomenal run the last couple of years for you. I tell you, man, uh, you crowd was awesome tonight. We tried to put on a good show for you the last... Uh, after the checker flag, but that's all we can do on the freestyle guys. So, uh, but I tell you, you guys were great, and uh, thanks for sticking with me and, and all of us. And uh, I tell you, the Honda was working excellent tonight. The Dunlop tires were hooking up, and uh, I felt like I was on a rail tonight. Let me ask you this. Let's go back to the very first race, Anaheim. Found yourself on the ground. Did you ever think at that point you were going to be able to get to where you are this year? Uh, no, I didn't. You know, uh, usually you can't win these things missing one race, and uh, you know, that's the way it goes. Uh, you can't win everything, and uh, all I can do is do the best that I can do, and whatever happens, happens. But, uh, you know, I got a lot of support from my sponsors and uh, the fans, and uh, was able to pull through the last half of the season. Well, I'll tell you one last quick question for you, Ricky Carmichael. You showed the true heart of a champion all season long. It wasn't an easy road. Some places were a little harsh on you. I don't understand that because, boy, you always wore the smile, you always signed the autographs, and you kept charging. Yeah, I tell you, you know, I try to be as good as I can, and... Uh,